la main de ce que nous sautons par le la main de ce que par le Alléluia Alléluia Ha! Ah.
lovely are your dwellings, Lord. How lovely is your sanctuary. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Lord, holy, holy is your name. Lord, we worship you. Holy is your name. Holy, holy. We worship you.
Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord.
Oh, blessed is your name, living God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed is your name, Lord Jesus Christ. For you saved your people from their sins. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His name, shall, his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save you from your sins. Lord, your name is called Jesus. For you saved us from our sin. Lord, your name is called Jesus. For you saved your people from their sins. Lord, take my life and let it be. You want to give me another key? Give me, give me the. Give me the key you were playing in last night. Sikara no ma brava tati sipi. Suko rima ma breve. O reve bebe kara ma sipi kara. Slow your hands towards heaven. The Lord wants to come help you. Did you know that the Lord wants to come help you? Do you want his help? He wants to come help you. He's here to help you. He'll change everything. He'll bless you. He'll bless you. He'll bless you now. All you have to do is ask him. All you got to do, he's almost as though he was asking you for permission. Can I help you? Take, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let Lord, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart. It is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Havala Mandira Mande Rula Mandela 
Zera mama dara dari ele go do mundeia. Zega la mangue la mandera la dala de le la la mundare dea. Se cara mando la mangera mandero mamelo. Zuga la la mamba vale. Zila lo do ki mandero mandu. Zera vale pa mandebra vale kulo moru mamando la dea de vo. Sega la becca una bella vadila londolo non de remini. Sega la becca una bella vadila e mandobra mamma non de remini. Soga la della mandera vadela mandela con sotto londero mamelo. Bella vadela e mandela mandola mandera mani. Sera mangere mandola va sure ma mamma la nero mondira. O salandala mandera va dela mandero mongo su non bele nino. Alleluia. Se galana non ambera va di breve mandala nanni chi sei da da da. Alleluia. Get it on the land, get up and get it on, but get it on, 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 when we read about him in the Old Testament, any time the Spirit of the Lord came upon somebody, wonderful things happened. God came and visited, visited them. Heaven, the power of heaven, the power of God was revealed to the light. Today we live in an opportunity right now where anybody who really is sincere and true in their heart towards heaven can be so filled with the Spirit of the Lord that coming out of them looks like Niagara Falls. Looks like Victoria Falls. An immeasurable, unexpressible, unex unlim unlimited. Today a door is opened up before you. Today you could decide to live the kind of life that I live. I live a life where I've been invited in to enjoy his presence every day. There is... I was introduced to the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and there's nothing so wonderful and so marvelous of, than His presence. And so I have chosen now to enjoy that presence that has been supplied to me that I have access to by the Spirit that is an unlimited access, an unlimited grace given to me and to anybody who ever asks. Today, cease from religion and come on in. There's a realm that you know nothing about. The problem is, as many people believe that they know about the realm. And so it's very hard to get them from where they add over into this place. But you know, Papa's not going to let go. He's not going to stop. I mean, to say, if you would like things to be better in your life, Father would like for them to be better in your life. If you want some help. Because he obtained gifts for the rebellious also. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He'll change your heart. And I'm going to keep preaching to you till everything about the goodness of God becomes a reality in your life. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, to cause every person in this place to see the abundant life that is given to anyone who will ask. I ask, Lord, that the eyes of the understanding would be open so that the people in this place will see how wonderful it is to live with you. What a delight it is to fellowship with you, that they don't have to wait to later, but today is the day that they get to enter in. 
Lord, I pray that your people will have enough wisdom that you can alone give, that they would decide that the things of this world is not for them, that there is no real pleasure in it. Let me just tell you, people, you're going to have to sacrifice something. You're either going to sacrifice the glory and the pleasures of heaven to have the pleasures of this world, which are temporal and abusive and never satisfy, but leave you hurting and suffering and everybody around you in the wake of the same shame you find yourself in. Or you can sacrifice the pleasures of this world to have the pleasures that are in the realms of his presence and live in joy and live in peace and live filled up. You won't, money won't be your God. I've watched as many people have turned to vocations and have placed money and occupation and careers ahead of God over and over and over again and just say, well, you know, you know, I know there's a call of God upon my life, but I'm just going to go ahead and pursue this thing and that thing. And then before long, you can see that their compromise leaves them in nothing but shame and pain. Today, my heart cries out for the so many, the thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions, perhaps, that attended church today in the United States of America, where there's over 300 million people. Perhaps, perhaps three, six, maybe even 10 million people went to church today in America. Perhaps. My heart cries out to God for them that they could know this wonderful presence of Jesus. That they could know this wonderful delight of fellowship with Him where there is no conscience of sin, where all guilt and shame has been taken away. Where Father has said, come on in, by the blood of Jesus, come boldly, come stand here and have no sense of sh sin or shame. I've taken it all away. No matter who you are, no matter how you've lived your life, no matter how much you've failed, He's come and redeemed you and, and is dedicated to you. And the only possible way that this relationship would come to an end is that you decide you do not want to go on for He is devoted to your perfection. He's devoted to your protection. He's devoted to providing for you all that you have need of so that you can find yourself in Him and having escaped all that realm of sin and the damnation that is with it. Surely there is a damnation with it and surely there is a wrath that will be revealed from heaven. But right now God's got grace and love and mercy for everybody and anybody who's breathing is under the realm of his love and grace and mercy. Doesn't matter how many times you messed up, how many times you failed, how many times you've been unwilling to go all the way. He's still calling you. He's still pleading. He's still wrestling. Almost most could even say begging, crying out, saying, would you come? Oh, what will happen when a glorious church rises up? I've had people ask me, they say, why is it that it's really different when we come into a meeting and you're teaching on a particular subject versus what goes on in the congregation when we are sitting in the church service as the assembly of the church? It's very simple. God has purposed that all the glory of His only begotten Son and all the fullness of His heaven be revealed in the midst of us. He pleads and He begs and He cries out and He calls to us to yield to this wonderful anointing, this wonderful divine provision. But so many people are unable to because they never come in to the relationship that they can delight in. They're still in a place of shame. God wants you to come out from behind that bush and don't be naked anymore. He will clothe you with His glory and His splendor. He will put a crown of loving kindness and tender mercies upon you. He will give to you His grace and He will give to you His glory without measure. Hallelujah. Thank All you have to do is believe. Hallelujah. You can't earn it. You can never deserve it. <laughs> he provides it and grows us up in it. Hallelujah. He gives us a coat of glory and develops us to be able to, do, to wear it. He never wearies. He never faints. His long suffering, his patience never comes to an end. It's amazing. Somebody said to me, how, how can you be so patient with so and so? How can you be so patient with those uh, those group of people who will not hear? Oh, it's no problem. I'm taking instructions from my father. 
I think of how long-suffering and impatient he is with me. I see Jesus and I see all of his glory. And I see the provision that he's made for me to walk with him. Hallelujah. I see the provision, the plan of the ages to be conformed to the image of the Son, who is the express image of the person of the Father. And I see how long-suffering he is to develop me to come into that place. And oh, it's not, none, of my, none of my efforts, none of my works will ever do. But as I enjoy walking with him in the cool of the day, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the moment of the time, in the glory of the Spirit, as I enjoy relationship freely receiving from him all things. I said freely. I said free. I, I freely receive. I'm not earning nothing. I haven't ever earned any things. I'm freely receiving all that he supplies. And then out of that, something begins to work deep inside. I want nothing to do with the things of this world. I want no communion with devils or demons. I just want to be alone with him. I want to be in the company of his saints around all that worship him. This glory is so good. The wonders of his presence. And there in this place of praising him, rejoicing in him, I'm filled up to overflowing. And that which the prophet Joel said happens and becomes a living reality in my life. I find myself continually prophesying. I read earlier today from a Jesuit priest. I enjoy reading Jesuit priest uh, sermons and exegetes of the scripture. And they were talking about how the tongues is the ecstatic praise of thanksgiving unto God that can only be offered by the Holy Ghost. I thought, I wish Pentecostals knew that. They may not, not many may have, some do. May, may not many in the Catholic Church or the Roman Catholic Church or the Jesuits know this, but some do. Some do. Not all of them are as ugly and as bad as secular news and opinion would try to make them. Nuh uh. God's got his people in every place where there is a, where there is a banner called by the name of Jesus. Jesus is the power to save. And I tell you, I found religion in just as many places and so many people are stuck on religion, but there are people who know the Lord and they have sweet fellowship with one another. Oh, why? Because they have fellowship with Him. There's a glory realm that is to be revealed when the people of God and the company of His saints begin to delight themselves in fatness or delight themselves rather in His glory because that is an, a, a symbolism of divine power and glory. So many people say they know God, but they don't know this manifest presence that produces this wonderful work of divine grace where you wake up in the morning happy and full of his goodness where the loving kindness is there where the wonderful meekness of his spirit proceeds forth out of your mouth where every part of your being's filled with his praise it's a different kind of living so many in religion still stuck in failure and shame and with their struggles and with their efforts trying to get God to like them trying to prove themselves worthy, trying to come to a place where they're not such a big disappointment to dad. But I'm telling you, oh, the Spirit of the Son, the Holy Spirit himself is right now bearing witness with me. He's testifying to me. He's declaring to me. He's saying, Mark, you are a son of God. Mark, say, Abba, Father. That's what the Holy Ghost is inside of me doing right now. Teaching me how much of a son I am. How, how privileged I am to live in Father's house. And when you're captivated by that, oh, I hate condemnation so much. I hate that, that sense of failure, that sense of trying to achieve in one's own efforts and by one's own abilities. Our culture breeds it with its grading system, with its evaluation of one another, comparing one another to each person. All the things that go on in the system of competition is so hard to understand how Father just endows us. I was born wealthy. Ah, I was born, I was born 
with all of the biggest blessings you could possibly imagine. I was born in the kingdom as an as a heir to the throne of God, as heir and co-inheritor with my brother Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. The captain, hallelujah, and the bishop, and the shepherd, hallelujah, of my soul. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to testify to you. God has done the same for you. Oh, what wonders it is when you step into this place and you leave behind the deceptions of this life. You, you're ridden of the veil that would hide the glory from you. And suddenly you find yourself in the holies of holies, brought there by Jesus Christ, given everything freely by God. For the Lord spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of everyone. How shall he not so by him now give us all things freely? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul goes on to say, who is it that condemns? Christ Jesus justifies. <laughs> Who can lay any charge to God's elect? Seeing that Christ Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. I mean, you can imagine yourself standing brought in before a company of people, a courtroom completely condemned with all of the proofs. Everybody knows that you are guilty and over you is hanging the certainty of the judgment for your sin and transgression. If the case is closed, you stand there under the eye of criticism, under the eye of those who would see your life taken away from off the face of the earth and then one innocent and pure walks in and by the power and force of his innocence and purity says, you go free and you liberated. Wouldn't you cleave to such a one yes. who did such a great thing for you? Yes. And then if you should go and find yourself in the same condition again, once again, he steps in. And because of his, the power and the authority of his innocence and purity, he declares you go free from all your guilt and shame. Though you're guilty to the full, though there's evidence plenty, though all the judgment says that you cannot live, he says, I give you life and I give it to you freely. Would you cleave? Wouldn't you be loyal? Wouldn't you begin to enjoy the presence of one in which there is no condemnation. Hallelujah. Neither do I condemn you, Jesus said to the woman taken in adultery in the very act with two or three witnesses. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And there he is with the empowerment to you and I right now to where that we don't leave him. He goes with us and he's there every day. We find ourselves rejoicing before him all of our lives filled with all those good things that belong to all that he is given. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Called joy unspeakable and full of glory and praise and thanksgiving and blessing and sweetness out of our mouth and loving kindness in the depths of our heart and prayer and supplication and intercession being offered out of our mouth continually for all men. What a way to live. What a way to live. No cursing, no def defamation, but nothing but God's divine power and grace and goodness. The presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of his glory and his might, seen in the midst of his church. And too many would rather settle for religion. And this is the anguish. For the Lord doesn't want his name to be profaned. Father's not going to allow his name to be profaned. He continually cries out grace, mercy, peace. He did so with Israel again and again and again. They stood in that place of representing him, of representing his glory. 
He gave them a mercy and a provision by which he could then dwell in their midst, even with all of their sin or with all of their rebellion, yet he still gave them a mercy and he gave them a grace and he gave them a covenant and he gave them a provision over and again and it lasted for almost 1,400 years, but it seemed that very few people really wanted to come into the provision that he had given to be taught his way, to become his people, to enjoy the fellowship, to enjoy his presence in their midst. It was always just a few, just a few. Father in his loving kindness cried out by his prophet Joel one day and he said, I am going to do a work. It shall come to pass in the last day, says God. I'll pour out my spirit upon everyone, not just upon the prophet and the priest and the king. It's not going to be beholding my glory afar off anymore, but i come live and dwell in the midst of you. The prophet stood up and he said, Can the prey be taken from the mighty? You can think of the prey in the lion's mouth. Have you ever tried to take something out of a dog's mouth? I wouldn't try. I don't care if it's a chihuahua. But how about a lion? How about a bear? How about the powers of darkness? How about angels of darkness who are at the craft is so great that they were able through their lies and, and through their slander and through their false message, their word, as the evangelist of Satan, if you would, to deceive a great and mighty company of angels that had stood before the presence of God, beholding His glory, saying, look at that, look at that, look at that glory. They behold the beauty and the splendor of, of the one whose, whose mercy, whose goodness, whose loving kindness cannot even be expressed in words. And when we try to do it, it cannot be grasped by the consciousness of men must be experienced and revealed by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, for the Holy Ghost who searches all the deep things of God. The, the, the Spirit of the Lord who knows everything that belongs to the Father. Who has everything that belongs to the Father and everything that belongs to Jesus. And who searches the deep and hidden things of God has come to reveal these things to us. Now making intercession inside of us. Making intercession Praying for us because of our frailty and because of our weakness. Praying, making known those things that Father has purposed to us. Making known, as it were, our need to the throne of God. Crying out for our need. For God, who searches the heart, the one that the Bible says from cover to cover, tries the heart of men. The refiner's pots for the silver, the furnace for the gold. But God, he tries the hearts of men. He searches the hearts of men. And when Father goes to search my heart, the Holy Ghost is there crying, here's what he needs. Here's what we're doing. We got this thing going. All the way to you, Father, conformed unto the image of the Son to do thy will, O God. Amazing. When you begin to pray for someone, you bring them close to the throne of God. I personally believe the greater you know God, the more effective you can bring someone to the throne of God. And I'm telling you right now, that results in people getting saved around you. I'm telling you, listen to me. People don't know the power of prayer because many people are stuck within the logic and the reasoning of that which you can figure out and you can't figure prayer out. But God has contained all salvation, as it were, the revelation of salvation within the framework of prayer. And that's why we see Jesus even praying with great agony in the garden, great agonizing prayer so that his sweat became as drops of blood. I mean, out of every cell of his body, out of every pore of his body, poured forth my redemption. My, how he loves me. I'm not going to be held in sin. I'm not going to be held in shame. I'm not going to be held in condemnation. I'm not going to be held in guilt. I'm not going to be held in some kind of discouragement or torment. When God loves me so much, I'm going to rejoice in His love. Amen. And when God's people begin to rejoice in the love of the Father and begin to celebrate Him instead of walking around all gloom, 
I'm going to tell you right now, our creation groans and is in travail even until this moment. But there is a work of those who are the sons of the living God who walk around in His manifest presence and in His manifest presence there now are revealed that something happens to them that the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 55 and I believe it is verse 12. He said, you'll go forth in joy. You'll be, you'll go forth, be led forth in peace and the mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. That's not travailing in pain no more. At the sight of the redeemed of the Lord. Oh, that's the manifested sons of God. Oh, yeah, I know there is a glory that's going to be revealed in me in a very short time. One day, very soon, I shall see him as he is, for I shall be like him. I will be clothed with a glory that he himself was clothed with when he raised up from the dead on the third day and ascended to the right hand of the Father. I shall see him face to face, for I shall be like him. But nonetheless, I'm a manifested son right now. And the Holy Ghost is saying so inside of me. He testifies to me. His spirit bears witness with my spirit. His spirit, in other words, is witnessing to my spirit. His spirit is testifying to me. Is in Romans chapter 8 a powerful verse, powerful passage of Scripture. You know, I kind of started in verse 1 and I've already, I've gone to third verse 34 and now I'm back to verse 16 and then I jumped over on 26 and 27 and now I'm back to verse 14 and I'm going to jump all around Romans chapter 8 but I'm sure you know where I'm at. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Can the prey be taken from the mighty? Can that which lawfully went into captivity be delivered? When you think about someone lawfully going into captivity or it was just the legal result of being made a prisoner, you would have to think of Adam and you would have to think of men because of their sins. We literally, legally became the prisoner and the possession of a demonic realm of, of angelic hosts who are possessed by hate, who are possessed by every evil thing. And the Lord says, Surely thus saith the Lord God, I shall deliver the prey from the mighty. Thus saith the Lord God, I shall truly deliver the captive from those who have held them in bondage. I shall contend against those who have contended with you and I shall bring deliverance to your seed, says the Lord. It's amazing. Isaiah 49, chapter 49, verses 24 and 25 is what I just quoted. I mean, when you go to prophesying, saying, saying, thus saith the Lord, you're quoting scripture, you're in good... You're in good position. Because that's just the way it is. All the prophets quoted the same, basically the same message. Hallelujah. But it was under direct inspiration, living at different times. Some of them not even having known what the others said. Others having known. But for the most part, not knowing. Here today, oh, oh, God, what have I said, Katie's a lot. Hallelujah. We we will rabba sahra bahate hitela mahata kanasa takani. Oh, we ball on a mahumbra bahara bahate pahi shapu kutaya. We saturated and baptized in the presence of the living God, an unlimited supply of all the resources that heaven have made available to us so that you and I can begin out of our mouth and out of our bellies to be a part of this ecstatic praise and thanksgiving and begin to prophesy. On a Friday night, a week ago, in the school of the Spirit, I began to minister. I've been laying the groundwork to be able to get to talking about the gifts of the Spirit. To be in the school of the Spirit, to learn the things of the Spirit, to move in the Spirit, to move in prophecy to begin with, because that's where the moving of the Spirit always begins. And about the time, about, we started at 7, we started about 7, and about a quarter till 8, I began to feel the spirit of prophecy filled the place. It's a tangible glory that once you've stepped into it, you can recognize it any time begins to nah, move. And any time God begins 
to manifest that wonderful gifting. Then by about a quarter after eight, I looked around and just about everybody in the place was an ecstatic. <laughs> just about everybody in the place was in that joy realm. See, that's that place. That's that place of prophecy. You're already, you're, already, you're already there. The joy is there. The presence of the Lord is there. Is in the same room with prophecy. It is a New Testament form of prophecy that declares the wonderful works of God. It has with it thanksgiving continually. The mind of Christ doesn't have any, any forecasting misery, shame, or sorrow. No doubt or destruction. No fear or torment. That's all in a realm of the mind of Satan. And you need no longer fellowship there. But, all, but there, is a, there is something you must do. You must be willing to believe. And in this believing, you must begin to give thanks. You must begin to allow your faith, which is a power to move mountains and change everything that is around you to conform to the will of God. You must allow your faith to become powerful and meaningful and effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you and every good thing that God is doing. But that's easy. But the Holy Ghost himself testifies. It's the spirit of our Father who's speaking. <laughs> Jesus said when you brought before uh, magistrates and kings, he said don't even think about what you're going to say. You don't need to. For in the self-same moment, the spirit of your Father will speak through you. How about when angels of darkness, how about when threatening demon spirits, how about when principalities and powers of wickedness that right now reign in the realms of their high places come and with their threatening accusation begin to declare some condemnation begin to take some, some position against a God contrary to who I am. What am I going to do? I'm going to speak by the Spirit uh, of the Father, the Holy Ghost, and by the authority of His name, find myself the victor. Hallelujah. For this is the conquering power. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even in our faith. And it's a confession that comes out of our mouth. It's a life that we live. We've been brought into. It's been given to us. Shall I not also freely give you all things by Him? Rejoice. The day of your captivity is over. Rejoice. God redeemed you not by any works of righteousness which you have done, but because of his great love wherewith he has loved you. Rejoice. For he has washed you with the water of his word. He's washed you with the water of regeneration. The washing removes uncleanness. When you get filthiness on your hand, I'm telling you right now, if there ever before you need to demand those people fixing your food to put gloves on, I'd, just, I'd, I'd be happy with a mask as well. <laughs> it's now. Because there's all this stuff going around. There's all this mess. There's all this filthiness. And then worse than that, just imagine that you had to go out and work in some filthy place. First thing you should do if you are right in mind is go get yourself cleaned up. You're not going to get in a bathtub that's just going to spread the stuff around. You're going to hose off. You're going to shower off. Hallelujah. And that cleanness is the secret. It is a, an equivalent. It is a synonym to holiness. Uncleanness is the opposite of holiness. To be holy means you've been cleansed, you've been made pure. This is what God did for us. And he didn't just give us water to wash with. He washed us in the blood of Jesus, Hallelujah. which cleanses purely and perfectly. Hallelujah. It's the only thing that can remove the double stain of sin. The double dyed stain of scarlet and crimson cannot be cleansed, cannot be washed away with any kind of reagent known to men. Only the blood can cleanse it. Only the blood can take and remove that stain of death. Oh, when you see it, when you know it, when you know the love that God has for you, my goodness, when you're willing to dwell in this love, oh, what great boldness you have. People, you don't even get to move in the gifts of the Spirit without boldness. You don't even get to move in the realms of God without boldness. And this boldness comes from living and dwelling and knowing how much God loves us. How, I'm going to tell you right now, Satan is all of his lies and propaganda. is telling a, a falsehood against God. He's constantly speaking against God, defaming God and trying to separate you from them. I tell you, why don't you believe the good news? Why don't you hear the good report? Uh, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. 
Amen. Uh, peace. All right, everybody, come on in. Those that are near and those that are far away, God's speaking peace. He said, come on in and behold the glory. He's not saying any longer draw not nigh for the provision of Calvary has come and cleansed us and made it so that every one of us can come and behold his glory and live in his goodness. And then you've got to choose not to do that. You got to choose to get caught away and captivated by your problems and by your circumstances. To be taken prey by the mighty. I tell you, God, Christ Jesus is the Savior. He will deliver you. Hallelujah. 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 If you were taken lawfully captive by the powers of darkness because of the wages of sin, He will come and save you. Just call on His name. John says concerning the intercession of the Lord Jesus, if you sin, he said, I write these things unto you that you do not sin, that you never sin. But if you do, you have an intercessor. You have an intercessor. He, Christ Jesus is gone at, in the heaven. If we come to God by him, he will save us to the uttermost. I mean, he, the author of our faith will finish it. There's nothing that can separate us from this love of God that is in Christ Jesus. There's a who can condemn me. Who can condemn you? Everyone who contends with you, God said, I shall contend with them. Hallelujah. Who shall condemn you? For it's God who died. Christ Jesus. And yea, yes, has also risen. And who forever, forever, every day, every moment, forever, throughout the ages, forever, right now, every second, he's, his heart's on me. His heart's fixed on me. He's my champion. He loves me. He's the one who's standing there saying, yes, go. I strengthen you. I'll give you the power. I'll give you the grace. You can do this. He's on my side. He's the one who's champion every one of my causes in him. Forever living to make intercession for me. He walks into the room and says, hold up, hold up. To the principalities and the powers, the spiritual wickedness that tries to claim me, say that somehow they got some hold on me. Hold up! He's mine. Out of here! And God has exalted his name above every name, that at his name every knee must bow and every tongue confess. When your eyes are open, when revelation comes into your life, so that you can understand this glorious thing that God has done. When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might, far above those mighty who had you and I as prey, far above all of those who legally took us captive. <laughs> he set him far above all principalities and powers and mights. Every dominion, every power, every force that exists. Far above Christ Jesus now stands. Far above in authority. Far above in his command. And he's my champion. And he's my savior. And he's my elder brother. And he is the one who leads me and who makes my way perfect. You know, it's so beautiful. Was, we ministered to you by the Holy Ghost last Sunday, just talking to you uh, about how the, the Lord has given us a sensitized heart of flesh. If I do anything wrong, the Holy Spirit hollers at me. He doesn't just whisper. He hollers at me and he says, that's wrong. I got a sensitized heart. I see a lot of people do things wrong and they do not respond to the Lord. They've hardened their hearts. They believe in themselves so much. The pride of life is a terrible thing. Haughtiness will keep you from hearing the voice of the Lord. But oh, when you captivated by relationship with Him, oh, how the heart is humbled, how the heart is broken, how the heart is sensitized all the more to rejoice in Him. But the same Holy Spirit that convicts me and says don't do it immediately shows me the answer. And if I'm willing to just repent and do that which is right, 
everything that he has for me just keeps on going, flooding my soul. I see so many people stuck in a place of sin and offense against God. They don't grow into this realm of rivers of glory flowing out of their soul. They don't grow, grow into this realm of divine power being realized through their life. They're stuck. You still got a father who loves you dearly. You still have Lord Jesus who's pleading with your soul. You still have the Holy Spirit who's beckoning you. Come, he'll cleanse you and you wash you. All you got to do, you can just walk around doing all, just doing nothing else but this all day long. Lord, forgive me. Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, I'm sorry again. If that's what you're doing, if you're constantly sinning every two minutes, you can just be constantly saying, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry again. And he's going to work on you. Because he won't run out of mercy. He won't run out of grace. But he does expect there to be changed. He does expect us to confess our sins. And he's faithful and just. If we don't confess them, it's still on us. Still on us. It's true. I know that God gave the power to the ministry to retain sins. And also to release them. But all of his ministers are just like him. They don't retain them. They want to release them. But all people have got to do is get things right. It's not hard to get things right when you've got a God who loves you so desperately. When you've got one who's, 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 who's set a, upon your success. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isn't, it, isn't this good news? I would rather just keep you right up here. I'd rather just keep you on the first part of everything that I've been saying, not go on the second part. But I know that there's people sitting in here, you're holding on to sin. If you regard iniquity in your heart, if you hold on to sin, if somebody has corrected you and tried to point out to you, especially someone like me who's over you in the Lord, and you refuse to hear them, that means you harbor sin in your heart. And God says, I will not hear you. You regard sin in your heart because you won't submit to God's authority. See, people believe this. They believe that they can have a relationship with Christ Jesus outside of the church. And Paul said you cannot. Jesus said you cannot. They believe that God's supposed to come to them on an individual basis and tell them. That isn't the way it works. God has set up governorship. Paul actually talks about the relationship of the church with the Lord Jesus Christ in his epistle to the Ephesians. It's not really a lot about the individual. It's about the church. It is about all those who are the company of the saints. It's the church that is seen there as, the, as that the bride of Christ as the one that is compared to the wife that you and I have as men of God, as husbands who are supposed to love our wives even as Christ loves the church. There's a, there's a wonderful realm of divine power and glory and there's many people who rebel against the authorities of God. They don't want to hear. They want to do it their own way. They don't understand that pride is just as evil as adultery. I don't understand. Because they're deceived. When sin is harbored in your life, it's deception. God in his love and kindness and tender mercy has brought a provision so that your eyes can be open. All you got to do is keep a tender heart. All you got to do is say, all you got to do is say before the Lord, Lord, search me and when, uh, try me, know my ways, see if there be any wicked way in me, lead me in way everlasting. And then what he's going to do is going to work work in you to where that those people are over you and the Lord are going to be able to come to you and say, listen, this needs to be right. You, this is wrong. And you're not going to be hard. And you're not going to be arrogant, but you're going to be soft and you're going to tender. You say, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. Show me, help me. I want to be what, I want to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord. I want to be connected with everything that Christ Jesus is doing. Father's made it perfect. He's made it perfect. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. I, I, I hope that you're willing to, hope you're willing to participate in his perfect program. Huh? The, the Lord hasn't made us lords over his heritage, but he did tell us to rule the house of God. Huh? We rule the house of God with his divine authority as servants as servants to the people of God, to say, look, to lay down our life. Not to lay down our life so you can continue to be wrong. To lay down our life like Jesus laid down his life so that you can learn to be right. And oh, what mercy there is to, to learn to be right. Oh, what grace there is to learn to be right. But you've got to participate. 
And I want you to understand that the greatest way to participate with God is to enjoy his presence. Hallelujah. It's to live in to live and abide in such fellowship. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to open your Bibles with me. I just look here for just a minute at a couple of these verses of scripture that I referred to. Listen, people, the Lord wants to get rid of the leaven out of your life. He wants to get rid of the sin out of your life. He wants, to, he wants to get rid of the things that are not like Christ Jesus out of your life. The things that are not conformed to the image of Christ. He wants to get those things out of your life. He wants the leaven to be out of the church. He doesn't want rebellion to go on. He doesn't want people who are not submitted to the authorities that God has placed in his church to continue to go on doing what it is that they're doing because it's like a little bit of leaven. It's like a little bit of yeast in the bread. It makes the whole lump leaven. It messes the whole thing up. God in his mercy and loving kindness continues to work with people. All you got to be do, I got to be willing to do is, is, is to be worked with. Because there's, not, there's nothing going to shut, shut God's love down for you. There's no, but, but the thing about it is, is the collateral damage that's taking place in your life and in the lives of people around you because of wrong choices. Listen to me. There is a glory of the Father that He would like to reveal in your life right now as a son. Please listen to me. Please, after such a long time as this, just step out of where you're living now. Step out of what you think you know right now and yield yourself wholly over to Jesus. I mean, you began to sing it with us just a few minutes. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moment and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will. It is thine own. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Wow. Wow. Would you do that? Would you just do that? Would you, would you just be willing to respond? Just say to the Lord, say, take my will and make it thine. Oh, how, what, how easy it is then to come under the governorship of the Holy Ghost. How easy it is to come now and let the ministers that the Lord Jesus Christ has raised up begin to be the instruments of God to perfect you and mature you. The Lord knows those that are submitted unto him. The Lord knows those that are yielded to him. And because the Lord knows those that are submitted to him and those that are yielded to him, the servants of the Lord also know the same thing because he gives us the grace and the ability to minister. And then we then are labor, we able to impart, we able to give because the Holy Spirit's the one who decides what everybody is going to get. And the only way that true uh, submission is ever going to take place and true connection with God is ever going to take place is because you allowing God the Holy Ghost to fill you up with love because that connection takes place within the framework of God's love not human love God's love anybody can pretend to be happy anybody can pretend I mean they can pretend lots of people pretend they put on a happy face I know a number of I know a number of people the very close friends of mine even in ministry put on a happy face their life is hell and misery behind the scenes and, and they've chosen it to be that way. And God doesn't want it to be that way for anybody, from the, from the priest all the way down. So today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today, decide, I'm going to get everything right. I'm going to let everything be cleansed. I'm going to let the man of God look into my heart, look into my life. I'm going to let the servants of the Lord look into my heart, look into my life. Because I'm going to let the Holy Spirit look into my heart, look into my life. And if they've got anything to say to me and they're going to, they want to correct me, they want to, they want to declare the good things of God, I'm all happy to hear it. And I will immediately comply and obey and repent and say, okay, let's get this thing right. Because that's just a tender heart. That's a new heart. That's that soft and, and, and beautiful pliable spirit that just wants it God's way. Uh, then, and, and then, my goodness, there, there should never be any holdups. There should never be any trip-ups. There should be no setbacks. Everything's good, people. You'll find yourself every day advancing and every day increasing more and more. And what happens in the advance and what happens in the increase? The joy. 
it increases. The fellowship, enjoying, living every day to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Living every day to enjoy His manifest glory in your life. Huh? Not searching for it. Not looking for it. Because if you're searching for it and looking for it, something's wrong. You hung up somewhere. We want to live right yet. Because it's, His glory is here. His glory is there when you wake up in the morning. His glory is there when you are walking out your daily life. Hallelujah. His help. Help has come. Help is here. You might be saying, help me, Lord. You can continue to say, oh, help me, Lord. Help me. He's going to say, I've been helping. I'm here. Help is here. I'm, help is here. Now you've got to listen to me. Now you've got to recognize me. Now you've got to be willing to participate with me. Look in Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Oh, Robin's here with baby. Hey, there's the baby. Lord Jesus, bless the baby. Baby needs to be. I, I really believe in the front rows. I, I, you know, I really believe that you should. I, I don't believe. I believe that the worst seat in the house is the back seat. It's been said over and again by the preachers that the people who move to the back rows of the back seat, don't take offense, are the people who are just about to exit out the door. We want you to everybody just to have it in your heart to move all the way up to the front. Get right up in the front. I was, uh, you know, I was raised in ministry and I pretty much knew all the protocol of ministry. And um, when I was going to the University of West Florida, I started going to a church, which is, was the largest church in the area. But I was just so hungry for God. I just abandoned protocol for the sake of mercy. Okay? Uh, I just went ahead and said, I'm going to go for mercy rather than protocol. Because I know what happens in big churches, front rows are designated for just elect and special people. But I happened to walk into the meeting and I noticed that there was, uh, the special people weren't there that night. And there was all that vacancy on the front row. And the power of God was there. The anointing of the Holy Ghost was there. The, the, the preacher that was there is, is dead now. Actually, uh, he's, he, was, uh, he was out of the Word of Faith movement. And uh, the Lord did great things through his life. Which are just a bunch of Holy Ghost filled assemblies of God who said we need, we need to press in. That's really how the Word of Faith started. Now, a lot of things happened in the Word of Faith that are different. But if you take Kenneth Hagin, he just came out. He was an assemblies of God preacher. Uh, the Ritchie brothers, others, others, great champions of the faith. They just left the assemblies of God and started going after more of the, the things of the Spirit. That's what happened. And uh, so I just went right up to the front row and got right in the big middle of everything. And the folks, all of the, you know, the keepers of the front rows, <laughs> I saw all eyes come on me. And I saw the, the ecclesia, the, the headship of the ministry that were all set on the front row. They all psh, looked right at me. And then they all nodded one another. It was okay. Why? They saw hungry heart. We want all the hungry hearts to move forward. God wants all the hungry hearts to get real close because he's going to hold you back from nothing. He's going to give you everything. He's going to bless you financially. He's going to bless you spiritually. You're going to prosper. You're going to be in health. Amen. Those who contend with you, he shall contend with, and he shall deliver your seed. None of my seed going to go miss the Lord. None of my seed, none of my seed will walk out of the presence of the Lord. You know why? You know why? You know why none of my seed are going to walk? You know why none of my children are going to rebel against the living God? Because I haven't rebelled. Huh? Because I walk with Him. And He's promised to keep your seed. And those of you who've lost your seed, all you've got to do, those of you whose children have gone astray, all you've got to do is get things right with God and they'll come back. All you've got to do is get things right with God and they'll come back. All they got, all you got to do is, I'm going to say it again, all you got to do is get things right and they'll come back. I'm just, God, make it real easy. All you got to do is get things right and they'll come back. People praying, oh God, oh God, oh God. He's saying, repent, 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 repent. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I'm not listening, I'm not listening. Repent, repent, repent. Oh God, oh God. He's not going to listen. If you guard iniquity in your heart, God won't listen. He won't hear you. That's why it's good to get down on your face before the Lord and say, Oh God, 
Here I am. I'm not going to be condemned anymore. I'm not going to believe a lie anymore. I'm going to enjoy your presence from this day forward. I'm going to learn how to be thankful. I'm going to let those that you placed in my life correct me. I'm going to submit myself to your governorship. I'm going to come under your divine authority. Whatever it takes, Lord. I just want to be taught by you. And then from that moment, at that very moment, because that heart is right, you can just, can just find yourself rejoicing. And Lord, you should, not, you should not be held up. And those of you who tonight, you can sit in your, your seat here and, and know that everything is right with the Lord. You're not harboring sin in your life. You don't want anything but the things that God has for you. You can begin to just rejoice all the more. You can begin to just believe the word of God all the more. You can begin to now take a hold of these wonderful things that are in God and find yourself being promoted, not, sit, not, not just sitting in the same seat in the same position. Promotion doesn't come. From over there <laughs> or over the other place. Promotion only comes from the Lord. God, the Holy Spirit's looking right now. He's, he's, he he who, who searches the hearts. Huh? Right now knows the mind of the Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit doing? He's right now interceding and praying for your areas of your infirmities. He's right now praying, interceding for the areas of your weakness, for your blind spots, for the things you can't hear, the things you're, un, you're unwilling to, to respond to in God. Wouldn't it be wonderful to live all your days healthy and blessed? Yes. Huh? Yes. Wouldn't it be just wonderful? Yes. Live the rest of your days yes. joyful, no matter what anybody does, no matter what circumstance comes, you're happy. Somebody's hollering at you, screaming at you, telling you you're a terrible person. He's happy. <laughs> he is so blessed. He's just so rejoicing in God. That life is ours right now. It's the life for you, that you can have. Things just, oh, listen, I, I am so I am so blessed at what goes on in this place because the hearts of the people that are in this place are so set on knowing God and so set on having the things that the Spirit of the Lord has commanded. Now all you need to do is quit listening to the voice of Satan, the lies and the threats. Quit listening to the one, the spoiler, who, who says you cannot take the prey out of my mouth. Quit listening to the one who would try to lawfully take you and, and, and put you into prison because Christ Jesus has come and he's set you free and he's come and given you everything that he has and he forever, always, every second lives to make intercession for you. God the Holy Ghost right now is interceding on the inside of you, helping you. He's, it's, it's like he uses this word where the Spirit himself groans with, 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 with things that are words that can, uh, uh, cannot be uttered. It's groanings. It's almost like we almost could say that it's similar to Jesus agonizing, if need be, agonizing in the, in the garden over the areas of our life that needs to be changed. But I look at it in a little bit different way from that. I look at groanings which cannot be uttered as the Holy Spirit actually putting on the inside of us a great hunger and a great thirsting and a great longing. These are the deep longings of the Holy Spirit. The deep longings of God placed on the inside of us by the Holy Spirit so that we out of that realm can begin to receive all that the Father wants to give to us. I want you to read this with me here. I want you to believe the good news. I want you to believe that God loves you so much that he's not going to let you go, that nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. I want you to believe that God who spared not his own son but freely get, but delivered him up for us all shall freely give you all things. I want you to believe who can lay any charge to God as elect. It is Christ Jesus that died and he rose again and even ever lives to make intercession for you. I want you to now, therefore now have no more condemnation. That's how it gets started, Right? Romans chapter 8, 34 becomes a very strong statement because now it's all in the view, in view of there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. These, these that are in Christ Jesus, they filled with the presence of the Lord, the living God is on the inside of them, the Spirit testifying to them that they are the sons of God. 
And as a result, they rise up in this place and in this realm of the manifest presence of God as the manifest sons of God. And there is a whole other realm of divine power and divine glory. You're empowered now to be conformed to the image of the Son, which Father has predestinated every one of us to be conformed to. Empowered. Empowered by grace. Not by works, by grace. Not by your own efforts. Not trying to show God, yeah, Lord, I just want to prove myself to you. But what? Forget about it. You ain't proving nothing. You prove how much of a failure you are. That's about all you can prove. You can prove how you can't do anything without him. You can prove that. Yeah, hallelujah. He, he, look, he's not going to, not many mighty, not many noble. Huh? Not many of these, not all these people are self-reliant. Why? Because he's not going to let anybody glory in. And no flesh shall glory in his presence. <laughs> it's his work. It's, he, it, it's, those, it's, those who, it's those who come needy. It's those who come dependent. It's those who come reliant upon him, letting him do his work on the inside of them. These are the people that get to go on from glory to glory. These are the people who constantly find themselves uh, maturing and, 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 and increasing with the increase of God, speaking to mountains and then moving out of the way. Everybody's polishing up themselves. You know what? You just polish, you're on your own. Huh? Everybody's fixing themselves up. You're on your own. Everybody's trying to earn something with God. You're on your own. Huh? Everybody, try, everybody trying to gain something in God. You're on your own. Huh? The people who just trust the Lord and believe Him, they running with the program. Signs, wonders, and miracles following them. Hallelujah. They full of grace and mercy. They don't have condemnation. They don't have, they, if you have condemnation in your heart because you're condemned before God, you can condemn others. Huh? You can condemn others instead of giving them mercy and giving them grace. Instead of just giving them forgiveness and giving them love. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to go over and visit somebody tomorrow, and they're going to sit down, and they're going to pour themselves a couple shots of whiskey while I'm there. Huh? They're, 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 they're keep themselves from any choice words because, you know, that they would normally say out of respect. And, you know, they got all their stuff. They got all their lavish wealth. I'm going to go up there just love on them. That's just what I do. I'm there, there's no, you know, I'm there to reach people. I'll go to about a night. I'm not contaminated by that. Huh? They're going to get, they're going to get contaminated by me. <laughs> I got a Holy Ghost contagion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mangalas are there today. Boss will go today. Havrabana is about a day. Prusa. La 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 mengish to parity. Hallelujah. People, people, I pray in Jesus' name you'll start going everywhere representing the delivering power of God, the one who's able to take the, the prey from the mighty. I can take the prey from the mighty because the, the captain of our salvation, the one who who has all authority above all principalities and powers and mights and dominions lives on the inside of me and speaks his words graciously through my mouth by the Holy Ghost which he's given to me. A word of deliverance. Man, if we could just keep people in church, they would continue to get better. Yeah. We could, ha, hallelujah. If we could just keep people in the house of God, they would continue to grow and prosper and be blessed. Oh, rabastiki le masan la portare. In the house of God. People don't think they need church. I tell you, you need church. I tell you right now, John's so strong about it. He says if they go out of the church, it's because they're not of us. If they go out of our company, it's because it's manifested that they're not of us. Huh? Somebody said, oh, that's controlling. It's not controlling. It's truth. <laughs> the door's not locked. It's just a manifestation of what's really going on. That's what, Paul, that's what John says. I'm in the company of the church. I've never left the church. I'm staying in the church. How about you? Yes. How about you? Yes. To be stays to stay right here in this place of total reliance upon God. Where else can you go? If you're feeling bad about yourself and you've failed and, and, and you've not done those things which are right in the sight of God, where else can you go? I mean, there's no other place to go. Just run to Jesus. He's not going to reject you. 
Just a man back. Run to him very, very quickly. I mean, the Holy Spirit is saying, go now. But you've got to recognize the enemy of your soul is condemning you, saying you can't. He's, he's trying to turn the whole thing around and make you so overwhelmed with your failure and with your guilt and with your problem as though somehow, you know, you're not worthy. No, you're not worthy. You never was worthy. Just say, yeah, you're right. And just tell the, Satan, you know, it's the first time you ever said anything true. <laughs> But Christ Jesus is your worthiness. Jesus walks in the room and says, hey, he belongs to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's got to be really important to you when you breathe out your last breath. It's going to be really important to you that Christ Jesus is standing there. I have a personal word from the Lord that he will come to me and receive me unto himself. When I die, Christ Jesus, no angels, Christ Jesus coming for me. Why? Because it's a personal word to me that's real to me. I don't know, maybe angels come after you, but Jesus is coming for me. And I believe that anybody who's willing to take up the same. <laughs> Amen. I don't believe, if you, if you die and you find yourself in a room, in a tunnel, it's a bad thing. <laughs> so everybody I know that went into some tunnel or went into some waiting room, it wasn't going to work out good. You, it ain't going to work out good. You know you messed up now. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Just go ahead and go up a couple times and get ready because you're getting ready to be thrown in prison for eternity. Huh? Everybody who dies in the Lord immediately, they take it into that place of glory. The heavenly host is there. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, there's some people that's had great influence on my life. And, uh, you know, just because of their ministry and and Dake, who did the Dake Annotated, attended, Dake Annotated Bible, is one of those people. And one of the great stories of Dake is um, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't doing well. He's really old and, and whatnot. And Philip, his son, and Finette, his daughter, and, you know, the family's around. They're saying, Daddy, we need to take you to the hospital. And he goes, no way. Look outside. Can't you see the angels standing there waiting for me? Can't you see? My ride is on the front lawn. That is the only way to go. There ain't no tunnel. There ain't no room. It is just you going, you're going out of this realm right over in the other realm. There ain't no decision to be made. Room's a decision. Tunnel is not good. It's something that's strange. It's, it's, I'm walking with the king right now. I'm walking with Christ Jesus right now. My eyes can't see this realm of divine glory as I want to see. Every once in a while, we get to get a glimpse. Isn't it beautiful through vision? Oh, I want, don't you want vision more in your life? Don't you want vision? I mean, I mean the vision that causes you to be, I'm not just talking about vision. I'm talking about vision that allows you to see over there and the reality of what's going on, to be able to see Christ Jesus accompanying you. Hallelujah. My father told me about when he was a young man and, and he first received an anointing of the Holy Ghost to move in miracle ministry. And the Lord opened his eyes and allowed him to see what was going on. He would reach out and lay his hand on someone who was sick. And the angel of the Lord that stood by him would also reach out his hand, lay his hand on top of my father's hand, and the person be healed every time. It's beautiful to be able to have your eyes open to see that. Wouldn't you like to have vision? Aren't you interested in vision? I'll pour out my spirit, says the Lord, in the last day. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to deliver you as a, you were prey in the mouth of the mighty, in the mouth of the lion. I deliver you from the mouth of the lion. That's what Paul said, oh, we were delivered out of the mouth of the lion. I've delivered you as the prey from the mighty. I have taken you that were lawfully put in a prison, and I set you free. You mind, you belong to me. Wouldn't it just be wonderful to just find yourself now enjoying all these benefits of these last days where he's poured out his spirit without limit, without measure, not in some portion, not just divided to you, some portion, but given to you the unlimited glory, the unlimited grace race, everything that he himself possesses, and the Holy Spirit's here to show it to us and prove to us that it's true. Everything that God has is right now readily available for you. <laughs> to participate with visions and with dreams, 
to lay down your head on your bed at night and it's not filled with all the concerns and worries and stress and all the, all the interests of, 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 this, of this natural life, but you're captivated, your heart's captivated with Him. You've been delighting in His presence all day, re- living, living in, 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 in rejoicing in the manifest presence that you get to walk in and you lay your head down at night and you say, Lord, I'm just looking so forward to the things that you're going to speak to me and reveal to me tonight as I dream just as Jacob lay down and he dreamt and saw heaven open. Huh? Every night becomes a habit. What happens is these prayers, these petitions, these supplications become a part of our life, become a fixture in our life. Father hears it. It's not some ritual. It's not just something that you're, that's coming out of your mouth. It's not in your heart. It's the deep desires. It's the deep longings of your heart that the Holy Spirit himself places there. Oh, it's wonderful to be in communion with the living God rather than stuck in some religion idea, religious ideology trying to get right, trying to be acceptable. That's sad. That's sorrowful. That's anguish of soul. Oh, it's great liberty when you know you loved. To know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God. And you just make up your mind, I'm dwelling in love. And when I'm dwelling, and I get to dwell in love, I get to dwell in love, love of God because the Holy Ghost is with me. He's here with me right now. <laughs> At this very moment, he's here with me. And he's in me right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Angels all over the place. This room can't contain all of them. There is a great company here. We're getting ready to move over into the other building. That's going to be more home. That's home. I've been wanting to get over there. That's home over there for a while. Huh? And then we'll just see what kind of miracles God will do. I see God, at, I see God in the miracle working business right now. I expect a miracle from God every day. I'm not expecting something to just be normal, some, some bad consequence. I'm expecting a miracle of great events in God. Huh? We... The, Nathan and a whole group of you, but m- many of you have been laboring over there. Saw Rock over there and a bunch of you just getting at it. Jonathan, I mean, Ulysses is just a picture. I'm glad somebody went and got Ulysses. And, 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 and my, I'm glad somebody knocked on the door and got Ulysses because, I mean, my goodness. He, thank you, Lord Jesus, for Ulysses. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Every time I go over there, he's there. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> God's about doing great things. We now, I I believe we get about 500, 600 people in there. We're going to kick it off with one of the foremost leaders of the house church of China. I'm talking about his church is literally, honestly, his church is several million people. It truly is several million people. It's a network. It's the way the, the house Church of China works. And what God has done through him. He's the guy who when they threw him in prison and everybody was good, telling them how they're going to tear him apart and if he, was, if he was truly serving him, God, he wouldn't be there in the prison. He's the guy who glowed all night. <laughs> and everybody in the prison gave their life to the Lord. When somebody in the prison's glowing all night when they lay down to rest, you don't mess with that guy. <laughs> And it's dark anyways. It's even dark. It's dark everywhere in China because they could really basically try to conserve electricity man, wherever they got it. <laughs> it's really dark in prison. And you got this guy glowing. <laughs> Jesus glowed. When he was walking, he didn't just glow with Mount Transfiguration. When he was walking on the water at night, when it's, so, when it's a stormy night on the Sea of Galilee, you won't see your hand in front of your face. They saw Jesus coming from a long way off. Ha! <laughs> ah. He was the only light visible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can't you, just, can't you just believe God? Uh, I'm going after a realm to be translated. I'm not just thinking about God uh, increasing a, a couple of dollar bills in my bank account. 
I'm not just interested in having some, you know, some, some, kind, of, uh, some kind of comforts, uh, creature comforts, as it were. I believe that's about the best, that's about the height of its blessing, creature comforts. I mean, just, you know, some new couch. I'm looking for the power of God to be so manifested that nations are shaken. I, I believe that God has appointed us to go and take uh, the, the mighty for our spoil, to go make the, uh, disciples out of nations, to lay hold on the inheritance where the, he gives us the outermost parts of the earth for our possession. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I believe that there is a realm of divine glory to be interacting with right now that when the lost come in, they are literally zapped by the electrical power of a living God and yes. stuck to the floor. Amen. And they didn't even ask for anything. And they didn't even believe in anything. It happened before. It's going to happen again. It's not going to happen at the same measure. It's going to happen in greater measure. I'm going to be in the beginning, the big middle of it, in the beginning of it. I'm going to be stuck on the sidelines feeling bad about myself. I'm going to be right in the middle feeling good about Jesus. I don't feel anything about me. I feel everything about him. I'm not asking myself, how do I feel? I'm telling me how I feel. I'm telling me, oh, look at what he's done for you. <laughs> I'm captivated by him, not me. Yes. Hallelujah. One day I, I was crying out to God. It was the early 90s. I was fasting, praying, just crying out to the Lord. And then the Spirit of the Lord started saying to me, and I'm saying, Lord, what does it take, oh God? Lord, increase the anointing of my life, oh God. Father, your visitations, Lord. Lord God, the things you did in the past, God, do them again. Lord, I know you know respect your persons, that which you've done through others, do through me. Holy Spirit, I want to realize all that you have. All this glory that I read about, I want these things. And the Spirit of the Lord started talking to me, saying over and again, get out of the way. <laughs> and it's like, it would just puzzle me, get out of the way. Move over. Get out of the way. Oh, Lord, use me. Okay, get out of the way. Well, how do you get out of the way of you? I don't know how to get out of the way. I'm stuck with me. Huh? You get saying, just get out of the way. Suddenly I realized, I started, I was thinking too much about me. I was thinking too much about my and my need and my issue and my problem. He wanted me to get out of the way and start looking at his answers, his glory, his splendor, his beauty, his majesty, all of these done for me without anything that I did. I didn't throw in it all. He did it all for me. There was a breakthrough in my life. I got out of the way. Wow, bingo. I see, Eureka. I got it. I'm, I'm looking at me. No wonder I can't see Jesus. I'm thinking about me. I'm thinking about what's wrong with me. I'm thinking about what do I got to do? Only believe. Only believe. The Lord touched me in such a radical way. The power of God touched me in such a radical way in the early 90s. I mean, I remember the first time I was scared to death by the power and the glory of God when I was about four years old. I remember times when I was six, seven, eight years old, being in those meetings and be overwhelmed by the prince of, by, by the, by the presence of God's glory. I, I couldn't even understand it. I just trembled in this presence. I didn't know what even was going on. Just this beautiful reality of heaven there in those meetings as people were giving their lives to the Lord and people were being saved and healed. But in the early 90s, the Lord touched me in a very special, wonderful way. And I was, just, I was just overwhelmed by divine glory. I mean, I was just gone, man. I didn't know if I was laughing or crying or crying or laughing. I had every emotion at one time. I mean, I had the joy, and I, I had had the, the, you know, I had the, the crying. I had, you know, a number of other things happened to me at different times, and the, the Lord lost the English language on a, you know, on a routine basis. But I had some of this, this thing happen to me, and God, it was so radical. And then, I'm, I'm in, you know, some days later, I'm, oh, God, oh, God, do that again. Lord, do that again. Touch me like that again. And I was like all wrapped up around, you know, the, the desperation and God to do that again. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, relax. <laughs> and I thought, it can't be that easy. 
I did. I just quit begging and, 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 and pleading, and I just relaxed. And I started once again just thanking the Lord. How wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glorious. <laughs> how he delivered me uh, from the mighty. How he, how, oh, I was legally taken a prisoner. He came and opened up the prison doors and made me his own. Well, when before I called, he answered. He took me unto himself and he holds me tightly. And no. Nothing can separate me. I tell you, you can get yourself a Holy Ghost download about right then. This is where it begins solitary. Satan is master of his craft. All the doubt and unbelief that gets us all wrapped up in ourselves, thinking about ourselves, all of our dreams and nightmares too that haven't come to pass. Most of our dreams sometimes, especially if they are designed by us, they're really nightmares and God's preventing them. <laughs> Hallelujah. God give you a heavenly dream. He give you a heavenly vision. He had begun to produce on the inside of us what God has specially planned for you. And only the Holy Spirit can show you. And only the Holy Spirit can prepare you. And only the Holy Spirit can make the way. And that's what he's doing when he's interceding, praying, crying out to the Father on our behalf. I want to read that to you. As soon as I find the verse of Scripture. I'm having a hard time getting there. What happened in my big Bible? I'm losing Bibles all the time. I like the big Bible. Bigger the better. It doesn't take a lot of Bible to get all of this. It wasn't too long ago and the whole of Europe had one Bible. Even it was called the Great Bible. And you could go look at it, but you couldn't take it because it was locked down with a chain. It was very prophetic. But that's the way it was. There was one big great Bible. It was held in one place, and it was changed, so no one could take it away. All you need to know a little bit about Jesus. You call upon the name of Jesus. I remember hearing a dear Chinese woman testify who God used in wonderful ways and, and sacrificed many things for the sake of the gospel. And she testified all, all, that when she, gave, when she came to know the Lord Jesus, she was standing in line one day just waiting, you know, for the distribution of food being given by the People's Republic of China. And there was a man who said, he, she overheard him say, Jesus. And she said that was the most beautiful name she had heard. It was the most beautiful thing name Jesus she said Jesus and the power of God transformed her life all she knew was Jesus she knew one word Jesus <laughs> many people here tonight you know all kinds of words all kinds of scriptures you 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 my you have so much information that you're about to explode. <laughs> All you need to do is just understand the most important word, Jesus. Begin to recognize who he is and let the Holy Spirit reveal him to you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, you listen to me. That is what's happening in this place. That's what's happening here. God said on it, somebody said, oh, you've been saying that for 30 years. It's fine. I'll say it for 30 more. I don't care. <laughs> However long, I just know, though the vision, Terry, it's sure to come to pass. Though that which God has prophesied, maybe it seems like it's a little bit delayed. It's still going to happen. Amen. God named the place. Amen. God keeps the place. We're so far out in the miracle. <laughs> We're so out walking on the water. Huh? Mm -hmm. I was telling the Lord, as pointing out to the Father, I said, Father, you know I need certain things to be able to launch the, the mission training center. I was talking to, to Ann and I said to, to, do, to launch the mission training center for the things that I want to actually get accomplished this year in bringing orphans over from Nepal. And, you know, just, just earnest about it. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, I'll take care of it. And that's supposed to be the end of it. As soon as you hear the Lord say, I take care of it. Don't start saying, oh, well, because that's doubt and unbelief. And now he's like, okay, well, forget it. Let me know when you want me to help. 
I must, let me know. The Lord just wanted to, he said, oh, let me do it. Can I do it? I want to do this for you. And, and we're looking to ourselves, trying to figure it out. God do great things for your life. God do great things with your life. I praise God for everything that has happened in my life, that everything that God has done through my life. But you know what? That, for me, that's just getting started. I mean, I haven't done nothing yet. I, 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 I'm believing for all the things that you read about in the Bible to be reality, reality in my life. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, stressed out about it. I'm captivated by Jesus. And I know that in this captive, being captivated by Jesus, one day I'm just going to be minding my own business, enjoying the presence of the Lord. And the Lord's going to whisper to me and He's going to say, you're now going to whisper, whisper. And when you go, I'm going to shake the nation. You're now going to go over here and you're going to say these words. And he makes it all happen. He arranges it all. You can read book after book after book of testimonies of men who God used. And they'll describe to you how he arranged it all. How they, they were just loving on Jesus, enjoying the presence of the Lord. And they found one thing after another, one door after another, one opportunity after another being arranged by God. Oh, people, here, to, here, here tonight, hear and understand the Lord's inviting us to come enter into the rest. Fear lest the promise of entering into the rest. Any of you should come short of it. Fear if you're there. Come on into the rest. He's calling everybody to come. All you that are weary and heavy laden, come on in the rest. The Lord said, I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to show you how to live this life. All you do is you live this life in lowliness and meekness because there in that tenderness before God, not being self-willed, you'll step into all the inheritance that Father has for you. Uh, just being a little child. Unless you convert it and become like a little child, you can't enter into this realm. You can't interact with this realm. Father's just called us to completely trust Him. And then in the context of all of the complicated things that go on in our life, the Holy Spirit's interceding. The Holy Spirit's praying. The Holy Spirit's taking up our part. In other words, we don't even know what to do, so He does it for us. That's what an intercessor is. An intercessor is the person who steps in the room and takes over and says, here, I got it. I got it. I'll take it. Pay no attention to him. I'll take it from here. Huh? I, I, he's with me. I'll speak on his behalf. Hallelujah. The Lord looked and he wondered that there was no intercessor. And so what did he do? He said, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. And that's what he says about you. And that's what, what he says about me. You have to believe that. Oh, hallelujah. Karamanja do your boy namagleste. Huh? Somebody said, well, what's wrong with me? You. Somebody said, well, what's wrong with me? You. Why don't you fall in love with Jesus today and just begin to worship him and start, stop thinking about you, start thinking about him. Can I get you to replace you with Jesus? God, the Holy Ghost is, God's what the God, the Holy Ghost is doing. He's interceding on our behalf. He's come to show us Jesus. He's going to be with Jesus. So that you and I can stop looking at us and look unto the author, <laughs> hallelujah, and the finisher of our faith. This one thing I'm confident, Paul said, being confident of this one thing, that the one who began a good work in me, he will finish it. He will finish it. He will finish it. He will finish it. Will finish it. Hallelujah. I am being finished by the Lord Jesus Christ for the day of the Lord. To shine with the glory and the brightness and the beauty of all His splendor and all of His glory. Father's given that to us. He's given that to us. The dwelling place, really, the dwelling place, honestly, I've gone away to prepare a place for you. The mansion, the dwelling place, it really is in a house. It's a body. It's a body. It's a glorified mansion. It's a glorified dwelling place. It's a glorified body just like Jesus. It can never die. It shines with the brightness and the glory and the splendor of His own. Hallelujah. It's that oneness with Him as the fourth man. God Father being there, Christ Jesus being there, Holy Ghost being there, and the redeemed along with them. Something so 
beautiful, something so marvelous. We almost have to just whisper it right now because people are still trying to decide whether or not they're going to enjoy the presence of the Lord or choose to live in a demon-possessed, wicked, tormented world, seeking out their own under distress. People, God in his mercy brought you here. God in his mercy brought you here. You better know for sure that it's God himself who leads you somewhere else because there won't be anything but death awaiting you. No matter how good it looks. No matter how good it looks. You better be certain that you understand that you are lost in your trespasses and sin. And God, he brought you here into this fellowship with his son. Don't you live out your life for yourself? Don't you go anywhere else? Hallelujah. And I'm really talking about this relationship more than I'm talking about a place, a geographical location. God, he brought you here into this communion. Watch out now. There's a lot of people with a lot of things to say. They've got a lot of opinions going around. Huh? There's a lot of folks that stand, you know, out there. They've never themselves ever entered into the realms of divine glory, and their lives themselves aren't right. But oh, they've got all the things to say about God and His anointed. Don't listen to that mess. Don't listen to the opinions of men. Don't listen to your own opinion. Don't listen to anything other than what the Lord says. He was so, I've heard recently people saying that somehow Paul was messed up. He was tainted by legalism. <laughs> the insight, the growing knowledge and insight is amazing. <laughs> well, Paul said, if anybody says anything different from what I'm telling you, I tell you they are cursed. If it's an angel... That angel's a cursed, because I got it right. Could you imagine being around a guy like that? Huh? So bold. So confident. Hallelujah. Today you would be a bona fide cult leader. <laughs> huh? Oh, John, he'd really be bad. Ah. You know, they that hear us hear God, that they that do not hear us do not hear God. I mean, that's powerful. Are you with me? They went out from among us that they may be manifested that they not of us. I mean, he was radical. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's people are radical. And this, it's not calling people unto ourselves. It's calling people unto him. It's just simply saying, look, I'm in fellowship with him. And if you're in fellowship with him, then we have fellowship with one another. And I don't care who you are and where you are. And, and I'm not cursing you and accusing you and pointing a finger at you and pointing out the bad things that are going on in your life. And who shall lay any charge to God's elect? Who shall lay any charge to God's elect? I'm trying to get to that verse of Scripture. I'm, I'm going to have to get to that one. You know, I was trying to, trench, trying to turn to my Bible to Romans 8, 26 and 27. I never got there. So I'm going to give it a go at the getting, uh, getting there to Romans 8.34. Let's try that one. See if I can actually get there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. See, I love this. I love this. Somebody said, oh, well, what's the sense in the joy? Because then you get to connect with the joy. Oh, well, what's the sense in long preaching? Because then you get to connect with the will and the word of God if you don't harden your heart. But if you heart, you harden your heart, you won't gonna, you're not going to receive anything. Because the same glory that would soften your heart Huh? And, and bring to you all the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ. That same glory will harden your heart if you turn your, if you turn your ear for, away from listening. And it will keep you from all the goodness of God and all the glory of God. Huh? Think about how far Father has brought you. Do you want to go back? No, you don't want to go back. Here we, tonight we find our lives, our house, all swept. And clean. Huh? We find our house, our lives all swept and clean. We find our lives washed with the water of the word. Washed with the water of regeneration. The king of glory has come in. The huh, Holy Spirit. Ha, ha, ha. He lives here in this place. I'm not interested in going back 
into a realm where Satan, who once controlled my life, had claim on me. The mighty, the principalities who held me legally in their prison would be able to come and investigate and see a life in a house all clean and swept and say, let us take seven more powerful demon spirits than ourselves and go and habitate in that life. And the state of that man or that woman or that person being far worse than before they came to know him. I'm not going back there. I'm not going to stand by and watch you go back there. I'm not going to listen to those who've gone away and who've spoken against the anointing. You listen to me, those you're watching right now on the web. Spoken against the anointing. I'm going to tell you right now, I stand in a good company of people because I'm going to tell you, everybody who speaks against me, put them in another place where the other man of God is anointed. I guarantee you, they spoke against that man of God too because they rise up in rebellion against the Lord and against his company and against his people. And then many people listen to their treacherous lies and to their words. They have not the Spirit of God. And yet, there are those who, as it were, on the fringes of complete consecration to the Lord, listening to these evangelists of Satan. Listen to those who defied the anointing. And the last church that they were at, where the man of God was anointed, they had an, a, a case and a problem with him as well. And so it will be. The only place they can find comfort is a place where there is no anointing. That's a tragic state because the state of that man is seven times worse than the state that he was in when he was just lost in sin. For now he's lost in religion. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was just lost in sin, but now he's lost in religion. Can't find your way out. You just justify yourself based upon what you're doing. And you live for some kind of accomplishment. I live for him. I don't need to do anything. I don't want anything. What do we want? You want anything? Oh, we want Jesus. What, what do we need? Do we need a house? Do we need a car? Do we need a bed? What do we need? Do we need any of that? Well, what, huh? We certainly need clothes. But I mean, <laughs> right? They don't have to. They just need to cover us. Huh? Thank you. But we're taking no thought about that, Mama says, too. And she's right. Mom's right. I put her in charge. I told her she's the boss now. She's not willing to cooperate. She said, no, we're going to walk in divine order. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? I tried to convince her, honey, you're the boss now. No, 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 no. We're going to walk in divine order. I said, well, you make better decisions than me. No, 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 no. God, the Holy Ghost is making the decisions around here. Huh? Well, come over here and let me lay hands on you right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's wonderful when you have a Holy Ghost woman in your house making you live by the word. Hallelujah. Got a Holy Ghost woman in the house that if you're sick and not feeling good, lays hands on you and rebukes the devil and commands you to rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that same blessing upon every person in this place, married and not married. Amen. I pray that your wives right now rise up in the glory of God and com command you to be who you're supposed to be, the priest of the home, the ruler of the house. Huh? The servant and the minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. I told you I was going to get to Romans 8.34 and I'm off again. <laughs> Romans 8.34. Then I... Hallelujah. Anybody drunk in the Holy Ghost yet? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of it. Anybody receive help from the helper? Yes. Anybody receive comfort from the comforter? Yes. That's all you're doing. Helping, comforting, encouraging... He does the correcting, instructing. Huh? I love it when the Holy Ghost comes to me and says, don't do that. <laughs> yes, sir. I won't do that. Don't do that. Huh? I love to be so protected and so hidden away in him that lust can't work in me. Think about this. I remember the day when lust would come and have its way where in certain circumstances, lust would be able to grab a hold of me in different areas, lust of the flesh or the lust of the eye, and it would be able, wouldn't it be able to work its iniquity? Well, there was a day before I was redeemed. It wouldn't work its work of iniquity, but it would bring me, as it were, under a strong influence. Are you understanding what I'm saying? 
And there, there was times that I failed God. There was times I didn't walk uprightly and didn't walk perfectly. But I'm telling you, I immediately repented. And one, I mean, I'm not perfect, but I want to be perfect. And that makes a big difference. And he's devoted to me being perfect. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. I mean, I'm, I'm complete in Him. I'm perfect in Him. Praise God. And that's not positional. That's relational. Can I say, can you understand? Some of you say it's positional. It's not positional. It's a relationship. I'm in Him. He's in me. Praise God. And now, because I'm in Him, He's in me, I, I'm perfect. I mean, in, in, I'm complete in Him. I mean, right now, if I was to be, I'm ready to be revealed. And, and being revealed, totally 100% acceptable to the Father. Otherwise, there'd be no way He would say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Christ Jesus made me and made you 100% acceptable to the Father. And while we 100% acceptable to the Father, we growing and maturing in Him in every way and being conformed to His image. But it's a beautiful place to mature and come to a place where that that lust, that power of iniquity can't even grab a hold of you. It's just, it's a pathetic thing. It's a sad and sorrowful thing. You just cry out to God, oh God, have mercy upon humanity. God have, it's a wonderful realm. You'll grow, it's measurable. It's measurable. You'll mature. You'll find a place hidden away in Him that lust cannot work its evil. That sin and iniquity can't, ha, can't bring forth its, its influence. So rimangesti palo mukatari, mambrena ningeliste para nossa tora te fica tala, es du toro nosi cara te pratan, malamba de vedisse tala nikate, mambamba la rete si tiesa, malamba de bere nosi picolo su parato, de resi di rama, malanga le se pera su se cara ne fete, loco na ke deka na ke deka lama kukina sa, merengi su su palo do pakana niki esche pora, malanga le. He ever lives to make intercession for us. God will save to the uttermost those who come to Him by Christ Jesus, whoever lives to make intercession for us. God the Holy Ghost right now is on the inside of our lives, making intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. He who searches the heart, who is God Almighty, knows the mind of the Spirit, the things that the Holy Spirit is saying. God, it's as though God the Father comes and searches their heart, and there the Holy Ghost is all He finds. They're pleading, interceding, convincing, making known to the Father His perfect will that is being complied with in our life as He's come to help us, lead us, guide us, teach us, establish us in every good thing perfect thing so that we should be found under praise and honor and glory unreprovable unrebukable without blame in that day hidden away man I feel like going to that verse of scripture in Colossians chapter 1 this is what the Lord's doing hold your finger on Romans 8 34 because I quoted it several times I'll quote it some more you know why I'm preaching this way I want you to live this way you know, if everybody was living this way, we wouldn't be preaching this way. We'd be preaching another way. <laughs> huh? Somebody said, gone too long. I ain't gone long enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We preach to some great event happens. We should always preach to some great event happens. I believe that's what Paul did. <laughs> Even when the boy fell down. <laughs> fell asleep, fell down. <laughs> Killed himself. Took him up dead. Paul said, he's all right. Raised him from the dead. Went and had preached the rest of the night. Praise God for those dear people who stayed. Of course, they only had Paul for a couple of days anyways. Might as well get all the, every hour he can get in. Uh -huh. They were in training. I'm about to be raptured right now. I feel like, I feel like I'm going at, I'm believing in the transfiguration right now. There's nowhere, there's no telling where I'm going to appear. If I disappear, I'll be right back, I'm sure. I mean, can you imagine being able to go? Somebody said, how can we go into Mecca right now? Just appear. And then just appear. And then when they try to get you, you disappear. Because Jesus did that. They, he was constantly disappearing out of their hands. He, the scripture says, and, they, and, he, and he passed through their hands. That is disappear. Yes. 
Okay? When you got a bunch of people mad at you and angry and they're all surrounding you, right? Okay? And they got you. They got you and they're taking you somewhere and now you're not there anymore. That's called disappear. These works and greater works. Praise God. That's how we can reach Kashmir. That right there is the mission plan for North Korea right now. All we got to have is some people step into that realm. Man, you're there. You're preaching the gospel. They try to grab you. You're gone. I'm telling you, a revival will break out the moment after you disappeared. <laughs> and if not then, by the time you reappear again. <laughs> Their hearts will have been prepared. <laughs> I mean, I just believe in the miracles of God. I just believe that that's just how real God will do everything in our life. He'd do it beyond all that we could possibly ever do or ever think or ever imagine. He doesn't need our help. We weren't there when he died at Calvary. We did not raise him up from the dead. It wasn't our prayers that brought him up from the grave. <laughs> Hope you can hear me. I feel like shouting. This is the gospel. Thank you. I should be conscious of the time, but I don't want to be. Hallelujah. I'll never take this presence for granted. Hallelujah. I'll never take, take this manifest glory. Ah, Jesus. As though it were just some common thing that I could just get used to. Oh, it's so precious to me. Hallelujah. And tonight I stand here communicating the word of God out of this realm of divine grace that's been given to me in expectation that everybody in the place will come under the same mantle of his divine anointing. You'll, live, you'll leave religion. You'll leave just the, the, the place of, of, a, of a mere human existence. And come step on in to a, this wonderful realm of heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I will, could, could you just, because I, I just, it just hit me so hard. Colossians chapter 1. I want to read this to you. Hallelujah. How many of you know where I just turned? That's correct. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Baby, all the way. Hallelujah. All the way to glory. Hallelujah. Guys, grab a hold of the partner that the Lord gave you, the wife that the Lord gave you. Hang on tight. Women, grab a hold of the man that God gave you and hang on tight. My goodness, he didn't make a mistake. When he, made, when he brought the, the two together, because what a team, the undefeatable, unmovable, unstoppable team. Colossians 1.22, this is what Jesus is doing. This, he's, listen, listen. This is what the Holy Spirit's doing. This is what Jesus is doing. This is what God's doing as he's praying for us, as he's leading us, as he's guiding us, as he's instructing us, as he's keeping us by his power. Verse 22, this is what Jesus did when he died for us at the cross, when he brought us into his union with himself, to present us in his own body, in the body of his flesh, holy, unblameable, unrebukable. You can't get any more acceptable than that. You can't get any more perfectly acceptable to God than that. Did, any, did I do that for me? Can you do that for you? He did that for us. He who spared not his own son, but offered him up for us all. How should he not, how should he, how should he not also freely give us all things? Oh, yeah. If you're looking to yourself, you're looking to the wrong place. Look unto the author and finish of your faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the majesty on high, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Whew. You're good to go. You're good to go all the way into glory. You're good to go all the way with him. You're good to go all the way into heaven. Now I'm going to finish up here tonight with Romans chapter 8, verse 34.
I'm going to start at verse 32. I started there this morning and I didn't get past it. He had spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not by him with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? <laughs> Who can stand before the Lord and accuse you? Who can stand before the Lord and say, he or she has no right to contend against you with the Almighty? The Lord says, those that contend against you, I will contend against them. Who shall lay any charge to God's elect? It's Christ Jesus that justifies. Oh, Lord, keep our lips from evil and our tongues that they speak no guile. Oh, Father, those things that we don't understand cause every person, every man to commit to you. Listen, dear people, if the Lord did not make you a pastor or an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a teacher in his house, you have no business correcting anybody anyways. Blessed be of those of your own house in your own house so that the Lord has made you responsible for. So why take any other responsibility upon yourself when you don't have that responsibility anyways? Why? I mean, come on, man. Give yourself a break. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Man, because the reality of it is, there ain't nobody can do this without a special divine grace anyways. That's the only way I can be right with God. That's the only way I can stay right with God. Listen to me. Listen to me. God's got something for you. You got to lay hold of it. You got to press in. You got to press in. You want these things. You got to press in tonight. It's pressing in by going past, getting past all the distractions that would distract you. There's nothing, there's nothing that you have to do tonight but believe. And in that realm of believing and trusting God, believing those things which He said, all these things the Father has will flow easily, effortlessly into your life. Verse 34, who is he that condemns? I don't care who it is, and especially in the framework, more than man. This is demon power. This is the spiritual wickedness. This is why you and I he to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in the high places. It isn't just in the category of sin and iniquity. It's the categories of slander and, and accusation and lies against God and his anointed. Satan and all of his hosts will not let up continually in their slander against God and his anointed as much as they will not let up in the propagation of their sin and their iniquity. It is continuous and it's ongoing. And the only way that you're going to be effective against it is to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. And the only way that you're going to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might is to be filled with the Spirit. And being filled with the Spirit is the easiest thing that you can possibly do because the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you, ready to participate with you in everything that you're willing to yield yourself to Him in. And so we say, Holy Spirit, see my yieldedness. Feel my hunger. Oh God, reveal your glory now. Can, I hear the, can you hear the... I, I heard the cry of you guys singing that. I heard the sound of your voice tonight. It was a heavenly sound. It was beautiful. It was that sound of the heart. It was the sound of the Spirit of the living God pouring forth from your heart. That's just, just lives this way. Oh, God. Who shall condemn? There's therefore now no condemnation. This is how the chapter started. Who should condemn? There's therefore now no condemnation to, the, to those in Christ Jesus who now walk after the Spirit. You're not in the flesh, you're in the Spirit. If you've been born of the Spirit, you're in the Spirit. Who, is that? who can condemn? You hear somebody condemning another, especially if they're laying a charge against God's anointed? It's a demon. They're speaking right out of... They're prophesying by a demon spirit instead of prophesying by the Spirit of the Lord. They're speaking the mind of Satan, not the mind of Christ. Because that's the realm of the satanic. The realm of the Holy Ghost, the realm of Jesus, is the one who's interceding on our behalf, removing the condemnation, stopping the slander, removing the accusation. Everyone who rises up against you to condemn you, he, he puts them to silence. 
He steps into the room and says, I'm in charge around here. He's mine. She's mine. They belong to me. Especially if it's a servant of the Lord, somebody anointed of God. He's the one who commissioned them. Everybody has received what they've received from heaven. God, the Holy Spirit, is divided individually according to his will. You cannot touch a servant of the Lord without touching Jesus. Even those that are least of his brethren, what you do to them, you do to him. That's why Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who is Saul persecuting? The church of Jesus Christ. You touch the church of Jesus Christ or anybody in the church of Jesus Christ. You touching Jesus. Touching Jesus. Touching Jesus. I pray that you hear it tonight because those things that keep you from having the good things that God wants for you. Don't get in agreement with the accuser. Don't get, don't get in agreement with the slanderer. He accuses the brethren night and day. And that's why God hates the one who sows discord among the brethren, creates the offense among the brethren, because they in league with the accuser of the brethren. Praise God for the intercessor. Amen. Satan may be accusing me, but Christ Jesus has justified me. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan may be accusing you. The slander may have all of his accusations and lies to tell of why you can't be a part of this great move of God, why you can't receive all the things that God has for you right now. But the Holy Ghost is saying, oh, you most absolutely and certainly can. It's yours. It's for you. It's freely been supplied. All you have to do is believe it. All you have to do is receive right now from heaven. Hallelujah. Who can condemn? It's Christ that died. Ah, yea, he's risen. Hallelujah. Who is even at the right hand of God. That means he's exalted above every principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named not only in this world but also in the world to come has been made the head over the church. I know that God would that all men should hear. I know that God wills that all men would be saved. All men will not hear. And all men will not be saved. But God wills that all men hear. And until you hear the word of God and it captivates your heart. And I can see some of you here tonight, your heart burns within you. These things will never begin to become germinated on the inside of you, as it were, to bring forth the fruit that Christ Jesus has determined. As long as you can live without these things, they, you'll be estranged from them. But oh, should you take up this holy passion that the Holy Spirit has given. My, 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 my. What a glory. What a glorious life you get to live. What a glorious life we get to live. Amen. Amen. What a glorious life we shall live. Just, re just, e just rejoicing in the King. Just exalting His holy name. Who, who is even at the right hand of God and who makes intercession for us? Who, will, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Should tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? I mean, that's some pretty intense stuff. I've seen people feel separated from the Lord and look separated from the Lord for a whole lot less. They had a flat tire. The toast was burned. The job wasn't working out. Somebody said something bad to them. There's a long list. Uh -huh. And they look pretty separated to me. They look far from the joy. But Paul says, no, 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 no. Should you want to stay in this realm? I'm going to tell you right now. Should you want to live in this place where Jesus is everything to you? Nothing, none of these things are going to be eclipsing this presence of God. None of these things are going to be interfering with the grace that Father's given. I can testify. Holy Spirit's testifying to me, saying, hey, Mark, you son of God. Hey, Mark, listen. I'm going to tell you, everything that belongs to the Father, I'm here to reveal to you. I'm so excited. Show me, Lord. <laughs> None of these things. Nakedness? I figure nakedness could do a pretty good job. Huh? But if you take it, no thought. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> nakedness. 
I mean, let's get real for just a minute, because we know, oh, well, I read that verse of Scripture before. Oh, yeah, that's right. Amen. God loves us. Well, yeah, he does love us. But how are you responding to him? Because the issue isn't about God loves us. It's whether or not you're going to find yourself bogged down in condemnation or not. It's whether or not you're going to cooperate with the Holy Ghost who's come here to bring you into a place of this oneness with him, this place where that there's no sense of sin where there's no sense of separation, where God can have his perfect will and way with you as God the Holy Ghost prays for you as everything of your life is now, as it says in verse 29, conformed to the image of the Son. As you find yourself in verse 34, not listening to any accusation or any condemnation for it's Christ who's interceding for you. Now, because he's captivated your heart, you ever look into the author and finisher of your faith. Nothing, nothing, nothing gets in the way. Nothing, because nothing's valuable into you. Nothing's important to you. Nothing. Sword, fine, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> huh? The mighty men of God. Go ahead, go ahead, throw me in with that. Go ahead, throw me in with the hungry, li hungry lines. Doesn't matter. I'm, I belong to him. Go ahead, heat this furnace up seven times hotter. Doesn't matter. I belong to him. <laughs> Do you know how many people I've seen turn to the interest of worldly care and leave Jesus behind? Because they wanted, they, they literally, the antichrist spirit of the age literally flips it upside down. Hey, I want to be a Christian and still take thought of my own life and pursue a house and, and a career and I mean, I've heard this come out of so many people's mouths and be, live comfortably and still go to church. It won't be long. Those people won't be going to church either. They turned it upside down. Man, if I thought that, I, wouldn't, I would at least wouldn't say it. You know what I'm saying? And if I said it, I would, I would fall down on my knees in total terror of what I just said. Because the Lord said... The only way you can have these things, the only way you can have this realm is when the things of the kingdom of God are the most important thing to you. And they're so important to you that you take no thought for your life, what you should wear, what you should They're so important to you that nothing else matters. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. No amount of, no amount of turmoil no matter of circumstances, no matter of situation, because it has no hold upon your heart. Yeah, as it is written, for your sake, Lord, we are killed all the day long. The church has not had to experience that in America. In the Sudan, yes. In North Korea, what is, there, what is it right now, 23? 33 right now are on death row in, right now in North Korea for interacting with the missionary because they or the people of the Lord. And they're not, they're, not, they're not backing down. They're not going to back down. They're going all the way. Sudan, Kashmir, other places right now, certain places in Hindu where there's strong fundamental Hindus, fundamentalist Hindus, certain regions of India, you're not going in with the gospel unless you're ready to die. That's why we need to be translated. To suddenly appear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm expecting some great miracles. Are you expecting some great miracles? Thank you, Jesus. I'm expecting some great visitations and manifestations of the power of the living God. Father has not left the business of revival. Ah. He's not left up, left off the business of pouring out his spirit upon our flesh. Ha. He, he, he's, he's not done with the nations and shaking the nations with his glory. And with his glory. He's not done. He's looking for some people who will conform to the image of the Son, whose, no, whose only desire for living is him. See, he's not a part of my life. He is my life. He wants to be your life too. Just so, it's just so beautiful. It can 
hardly even speak it. The Lord Jesus would give you the overcoming power that overcomes the world. So that yes, in all these things you can be more than conquerors. And all these oppositions and all these circumstances and all these things that would threaten you. Try to steal the manifest presence because that's what we're talking about. Try to steal the fellowship. Try to steal the interaction. Hallelujah. That's going on between you and the Holy Ghost. try to distract you and turn you away. Father wants this overcoming power to be in your heart and in your mouth. He wants this word of faith, this confession of faith, this fellowship with Him. To be so real to you. That all other cares all other affections will no longer have an attachment to your heart so that you'll find yourself never separated in any way from enjoying this manifest presence and beholding the King joy unspeakable and full of glory peace that passes understanding a peace of God that rules you your mind and your heart, all day long. A fellowship, a communion, where the Holy Spirit now, right now He leads you to some dimension. He just leads you to some dimension. But He really wants to lead you all the way. He wants to be able to speak to you. He wants to be able to use you. He wants to be able to fill you with things that you can only just vaguely imagine from the perspective of understanding what Jesus did and how he lived. And understanding what Elijah did and how he lived. And understanding what Paul did and how he lived. And understanding what Moses. All these testimonies are to us one thing. They are witness and a te declaration of those who found their way into the kingdom. They are declaring there is a realm that you can live in that is very different than the realm that all humanity lives in. And there's access for you. These aren't special, unique people necessarily to just talk about. These are people who declare to us, heaven is real. This is a real place. This is a real realm. This is a true fellowship that will produce a total different way of living. God's opened the door through Christ Jesus to every single person here. Every per person here tonight has a place to stand around. The throne room has a place, has an access into the presence of the living God to live out your life in the heavenly realm. Being led and governed by the Holy Ghost. What will you do? What will you do? power of the living God's here right now to take those of you who know the Holy Spirit, who've already interacted with Him, who've been touched beyond that which is normal and common and ordinary, to take you even into a deeper realm of understanding how to be led by Him, how to hear Him, how to interact with Him. He's here tonight for those of you who've not really ever understood these, this realm of divine power and this realm of divine glory. You basically had the salvation experience. You not really have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. You don't really know what it means to live beyond maybe just an utterance of the expression of tongues, perhaps. God, don't matter care where you're at, God, the Holy Ghost, wants to take you and introduce you to something far more real about the realms of the kingdom of God, about the realms of heaven, about that place where Jesus Christ now exists, where the Holy Spirit functions out of, so that you can function out of that realm too. And the beauty of it, the great glory of it, and the marvel of it, isn't so much the miracles and the signs and wonders. It's the manifest presence. 
it's this wonderful realm of divine glory. It's this place to be captivated by Him, to live only. My, when you touch by this, you listen. Oh, when you touch by this realm, you can't stand to be any place else. You can hear the cry of David's heart. Oh, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free, your liberating spirit. Holy spirit. Father, I thank you tonight that every person here in the abiding place ministry, those who are near and those who are far away, those who stepped into a greater glory and those who are still just thinking about it and still find it somewhat strange to even imagine what's being talked about. Those who live in a manifest presence all day long and those who visit from time to time, no matter where they're at. Father, I thank you right now in your mercy and your grace that you work a miracle for every soul in this place, that every single soul, every single person in this place will come to understand the glory of this relationship, the beauty of this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can fight all your life against sin and nothing's going to change. But you get captivated by Him and everything will change. You get captivated by Him and the things you thought impossible to overcome will not even be remembered. And certainly not desired. Because all your affections, all of your appetites, you have a whole new taste. <laughs> there was a time that I could go to Roberta's. <laughs> I could not go there. I have... Totally different taste. <laughs> there was a time that I could participate with sin. I can't go there. Totally different taste. <laughs> I tell you one thing I've never done. I've never hardened my heart against God. I've never put him in the backseat of my life. I've never told him I don't want to listen to him. I've never even vaguely acted like I did not want to retain the knowledge of God in my life. Not once. I would advise you not to do that. It will not work out good for you. I'll give you some wisdom. The wages of sin will produce death. God will not be mocked. You sow to the flesh, you shall reap corruption. Everything will blow up in your face like a bad experiment. So sad. I can't, even, I can't even listen to these stories where people make wrong choices and then watch their life unfold. I, I, can't, I, I hate that kind of stuff. That's a nightmare. There are people here tonight, you in the crossroads of making wrong decisions. To people here tonight, you in the crossroads of who you will serve the God of this world or the King of Heaven. You're at the crossroads of where the affections of your heart lies. I can tell you tonight, I have never, since I've been born of the Spirit, regarded sin or iniquity in my heart. And that means to say, that is a way of, another way of saying that is, I've never had in my heart saying, Lord, forgive me, while all the time I thought or considered that I would go back and partake of that sin again, that I liked it or desired it or wanted it. Never. It's always been, oh God, I don't want those things in my life. Lord, I want those, complete, those things completely removed from my life. God grants to us the power of repentance. The power of repentance it was spoken of by the Lord Jesus Christ and talked about in the prophets. It's the power to be born again, to receive an entirely different nature. And I know that nature when I see it. I know that new birth experience when I see it. There's a fellowship that I have 
with those people who have that. I've seen people born of the Spirit and go back to sin. I've seen people born of the Spirit and be entangled with various different bondages. Christ Jesus is calling and says, come live with me. Don't seek your own. Don't come with your own idea. I've seen, I've seen little men in the Spirit and big men in the Spirit taken out with their own will and everything lost. It's a terrible destruction. Sin is a terrible destroyer. Isn't it? Yeah. It's very difficult to be close with folks who knew the power of the world to come. I know the power of the world to come. I've interacted with the power of the world to come. To restore such a one who's now turned away from the Lord, who once knew the power of the world to come and then denied it, walked away. Just restore such one's impossible. I mean, we've seen up close and personal people who destroyed their lives. It's a terrible thing. Just simply making decisions that you're not going to hear God anymore. You're not going to listen to instructors. You're your own man. Everybody I know in ministry that ultimately I lost their way, they decided that they were so powerful in God they did not need to listen to anyone. None of listen to the pastor. I've heard men of God who've done things, mighty things in God, come to me, be with me, crying, weeping, saying, oh, that I would have listened to the advice and to the counsel and allowed there to be a pastor in my life, someone who has speak the word of God to me. Amen. David, was a, David was a king. David was a prophet. Some ways you could even say that God regarded David as a priest. But he had a prophet named Gad, and Gad came and talked to him and told him how it was going to go down and what God has to say. And before Gad, there was Nathan. And Father hasn't changed. And everybody wants to hear the word of the Lord on their own or go get two or three agreement with somebody they're not even under the authority of that person and can call it God. You'll lose your way. You'll lose your way. I'm telling you, you'll lose your way. Because you seek your own, you lose your way. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. He loves us, but we can walk away. We can do it our own way. And I watch as people, I've watched for years as people have done things their own way. Some in full, some in part. But no matter how it comes, doing, walking our own way, living our own way, there's going to be a good result. I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to be God's dependent child. I'm going to be God's dependent child. I think it's a wonderful thing to have people who watch for your soul. People who look at you and say, look, stop that right now. Who come to you in the name of the Lord. I tell you right now, you listen to me. God's more loyal than you, than you can imagine. He is. It's the man of God that's in your life, tells you to stand on your head and blow spit bubbles and you'll get blessed and you do it okay you're going to get blessed because you received it from the Lord amen the man of God is going to have to give an account for what he told you to do uh -huh. you got to give an account for how you received it and what you did but to sit there and make judgment about how it's going to go down you don't have the capacity to do that you don't have the capacity to do that And those who love the Lord and aren't seeking their own will, that's good news to them. Those who love the Lord but want to seek their own will, they're really resisting that. With every, they got every shield up that you can imagine. Say, no, I'm not listening to that. I don't believe that. You can believe what you want to believe. God gives every man the right to do that. But you've got an intercessor of the Holy Ghost. You have the intercessor of Christ Jesus. And you have the word of his testimony, the written word, declaring to you with verifiable proofs what is the ways of God. What are the ways of God? 
I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you respond because God's not going to make you. He's interceding for you. He will intervene on your behalf every time, but he won't make you do anything. You choose. I want everybody to stand with me. You choose. You choose. Black tu preta isti paru. What happened to you? What's wrong? What happened? You have cancer in your cheek, and you got a virus. Yeah. When did the cancer come into your cheek? You foul spirit of hell, tormenting this body. You know that's just a, a power of darkness tormenting your body. Did you know that? Well, I have this one. This, it's some kind of virus. It's a scalp infection. I don't know where I got it or mold. I understand, but do you know that that disease and that sickness is just a foul spirit of hell? that you have power over, that we have power over? Do you realize that? Or do you just think it's just some kind of breakdown of the immune system or something? I don't know, but I don't... Well, I know. I don't like it. <laughs> I, well, I know. I, I just want you to... I've never been sick. Sure, well, I'm, just, I'm looking for you to disagree with me. I'm just looking for some agreement. Because if, if any two or three of you agree is touching anything, so you just want to agree. And I, and I, you know, you want to get rid of the thing, and I, and I want you to get rid of the thing, and Jesus wants to get rid of the thing, so we're just trying to agree. It's just a tormenting demon spirit of hell. Does that scare you? Does that make you feel bad to think that a, a demon power of darkness try to f work against you and just disfigure your face and mess you up and cause affliction and torment? Huh? I don't know what to do to get rid of it. Well, we are in the right place. We're here tonight. <laughs> No, 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 no. You're so right. That's good. Gina's, Gina's a good girl. Gina's a good girl. So we're here to pray for you. We're here to pray for you. And we're going to pray the prayer of faith. You see. My, my mouth is so dry. My tongue is sticking to my... Oh, I see that. It's hectic. I'm miserable. I'm sure you are. We gotta lubricate you. <laughs> you can stay right there. You can stay right there. Did you know that even the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ anointed anointed people with oil, prayed prayer of faith? Did you know that? And sometimes that you know they just there's been times that that's happened to me without. You've been put in oil. It's a pretty interesting thing. Other times the Lord just gives me the bottle, gives me encouragement to get the bottle. Other times it says, I just holler at somebody. And sometimes I just say, you're going to be fine. And it's just always a little different. And the Lord's supposed to be different because we just follow in the Lord. We're not getting into some kind of ritual. Huh? Oh, hallelujah. So you're going to get healed tonight. That foul spirit of sickness and disease, that infection that's in your body, I curse it and I command it to go right now. You. Leave you alone. You. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord Jesus, I thank you for touching your daughter right now. Out of the body in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. I command you to be healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we glad you came to church. Why haven't we come to the meeting? No one come and get you? Sheila came and got me. I'm glad she came and got you. <laughs> because I whined. I whined. I'm so sick, Gina. Oh, bless your heart. Thanks, Gina. Sheila got me. That is awesome. I want to be like you guys. Well, be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, he beautifies the meek with salvation. Well, I just don't want to be, I've never been sick. I've never, never okay, well, you're beautified right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> beautified right now in Jesus' name. Oh, 
I'm so stubborn, I believe. <laughs> no, I wouldn't confess that. I wouldn't say I'm stubborn. I wouldn't say I'm stubborn. You can repent for being stubborn if you really believe that. But say, it's better to say, rather than to say, I'm stubborn, say, so I'm not going to be stubborn no more. I'm not going to be stubborn. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I thank you for healing this heart, touching this life. Joseph, I want you to raise your hands, lifting towards the Lord. I want to see the trouble in your life come to an end. Lord, the Lord Jesus is going to give you wisdom so that the powers of darkness will not be able to heap upon your head some kind of destruction against your family. So right now we're going to gather together and we're going to pray for two things. One, I, I just, you know, I, I just, I know that the Lord has given you a wisdom that, that you haven't had an understanding how to take care of, better care of your kids and to keep them closer to you. Because you've got a short, every parent has a short period of time to keep the children very close to them. And whatever spiritual dynamic is going on in your life, whatever spiritual realm you live in, your children are being overtaken by that for good or for bad. And that's how you train them up more than anything else. And of course, as the older they get, of course, when they're really small, they're totally dependent. As the older they get, you know how it works. So the whole time that they're small and are willing to cleave to you, want to keep them close to you. And as the church right now, just as we're going to pray in Jesus' name, that this trouble is working against you and your family, that it will come to an end. And God will be able to have His perfect way in your life. That there be there will be a going forward of the call of God and the anointing that is on your life. So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ stands right here alongside of you, saying, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, Joseph Deskins, hear the word of the Lord now in Jesus' mighty name. Hear the workings of the Holy Ghost and the wisdom and the, and the counsel that He gives. Don't be forgetful in the hearing. Understand that the word of the Lord comes to be the supply and the answer. Take heed to the word of the Lord. Regard it as something the, as the most important instruction that can be given to you. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all the powers of darkness and every force of man and of hell that would rise up against you to contend against you, Right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you that you contend against that power. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, you quit fighting your own battles. Hear the word of the Lord. You quit defending your own self. God has not made you the corrector. He's made you the lover of men and the lover of men's souls. No matter what they've done to you, To walk in meekness, to walk in compassion, so that the Lord can be made manifest on your behalf in a mighty way. Now do these things now. Tonight marks a, a turning point. I heard at the beginning of the service, the Spirit of the Lord says, Joseph, I want to help you. And you say it like anybody else would say, well, I, I want to be helped. But the Lord requires things of us you will discover that the most common word in the Bible, listen to me, listen to me. I, the church service isn't over, really it isn't. The most common word in the Bible is if. If you do these things, there is a condition that each person needs to meet. And it's just simply cooperating with God and doing what he says. The Lord doesn't want us fighting our own battles. He said, he tells us that he's the avenger. 
Vengeance belong to me, says the Lord. I will repay. Jesus told us, come follow him. When he was threatened and when he was abused and when he was slandered, he didn't retaliate. He committed it to the Lord and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what to do. He's the intercessor. Huh? Though they condemned him as a blasphemer, though they killed him with criminals and thieves, called him a deceiver and accuser, Yet when he rose from the dead, he did everything. He came and did everything he could to save this people. Now, do this now and live. Do this and live. I'm talking about do this and live in those areas that seem to be dead, those areas that don't seem to be working, those areas that don't seem to be blessed. Joseph, it's time for you to prosper. It's time for you to do things God's way, not your way. In Jesus' name. Somebody said, well, I heard something from the Lord. You did. Was it confirmed in the mouth of two or three witnesses? Then if it wasn't, you know what? You weren't willing to obey God's law of the spirit of life. The spirit, there's, you say there's no law in walking with the Lord. No, there is the law of the spirit of life. There's the law of grace. You can't just go do whatever it is you think God told you to do and not submit it and get confirmation. You want to get confirmation. And you don't want to go get confirmation from somebody who's just going to agree with you. You want to get confirmation and agreement from somebody who knows how, how to hear the Lord. And especially somebody who would be in a position as watching out for your soul to say, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. And then you say, well, no, 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 no. I'm going to do that. Does that bring back any remembrances to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And then, and then when you say, I'm going to do that, then it never works out. It never will work, never work, work out. Not, not when there's not agreement. Dear, dear people, you know, I've been around here for a long time. Many, some of you know me for a long time. When I don't know something from the Lord, I just say, you know, I don't know. I don't know one way or the other. I don't know. I have no problem with saying that. Because that's the way it is for me. I'm not going to make something up. I'll violate things in the spirit and I'll never know anything. <laughs> but when I know something, I'm going to tell you what I know. When I know something, when I know something, I'm going to say, here's what the Lord says. Now I'm going to tell you, you understand the Lord's very loyal. He backs that up. He does. So let's just go ahead and, and, and step into the blessing and the prosperity of God because the Father wants it. And if he's got a warning for you, don't ignore the warning. Don't ignore the warning. So now in the name of Jesus, everything changes tonight. Everything comes into agreement with the Lord. Everything comes into line with the living God. And so you be blessed. Amen. Um, I want to pray for people who have um, pain in their spine. Specifically, not just back pain. But actually, they have, you have pain in your spine. And uh, the, the Lord's going to touch you. Because I, I already feel the anointing going out to touch and to heal. So if you have any kind of pain in your spine, I don't care, it could run from the neck all the way down to the, to, to the bottom of the spine. It does not matter. Wherever that pain is, I want you to come right now because I want to lay hands on you because the Lord's going to touch you. I actually feel the pain already leaving. I actually feel the pain already. Just come on up because I feel the pain already going. You know, I really want to make a call because I, you, for, for those of you who've grown cold and lukewarm, Because the most important thing is for you to get your heart right. You know, and I, I've said a lot of things tonight about how easy it is to enjoy fellowship with the Lord. But I'm going to tell you right now, the Lord said that if you look lukewarm, He's not going to have any fellowship with you. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. He's, but here's the goodness. He gives us space and time to repent. Isn't that good? He's dealing with us. He's pleading with us. He said, but I'm going to tell you, 
You, I'd rather you hot or cold. I'd rather you just go and live like no, no, nothing going on, nothing at all between you and me, or that you on fire in the fire. But to be lukewarm, I think that I think that the worst part about lukewarm is a misrepresentation of who he is and who the people of God are. I'm also going to pray. I'm also going to pray for those of you who've been, you've suffered with either migraine headaches, or you've had sinus headaches. Anyone who's had to deal with any kind of a terrible headache over the past three days, I want you to come right now. The, the headache may actually even be gone right now but I'm going to deal with something else. Past three days, you've had a headache. Past three days, these things are tormentous headaches. I want you to come stand up here. I'm going to pray for you. There's more people. Just come stand. There's, there's, yes, there we go. Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus now. I thank you for the anointing. This spinal, spinal injury, this spinal problem in the name. Out! Go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That afflicting, tormenting thing. Father, we thank you for straightening and healing that part of the spine right now in Jesus' name. To be tormented no more with it. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, tormenting, afflicting headache in Jesus' name, that cursed thing, it leaves you alone not to be afflicted with that no more. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, I thank you for your healing authority here in La Rocco's life. Lord, that Rocco be able to rise up in your divine strength and power and anything that tried to afflict or torment his spirit or his body, he run it off in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. So Quran and Negus least to pay. Right now, the power of God touches you. Now in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Be healed, never afflicted again. Pain goes out of your body right now, Raquel. Right now in Jesus' name. It goes from you now. Pain has to leave out of your body. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the healing power that's been brought to us by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Pain goes out of your body. I felt it go. Did you feel it go? Thank you, Lord Jesus. No more pain. No more pain in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name, grace, I command you to be healed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grace to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yep, filled up. Yes. Yeah. Filled. Full. Full. 
<laughs> Boom. Oh, torment afflicting. Migraine headaches in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for rest. And I thank you for peace. And I thank you for health. From the crown of Rob's body to the soles of his feet in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now in Jesus' name, Katie, no more headaches. No more afflictions of the mind and torment of your body. You just stay clear of every unholy thing from this time on. Somebody start stalking that sin business, you just go away. Somebody starts playing, playing those demonic games, huh? You just call on the name of the Lord Jesus and get everybody set free. Just cry out, Jesus, come save now. Come heal. Come deliver. Somebody got some good oil here. Frankincense in that. Did you do that? Bless you. Bless you. I mean, this stuff you could almost put on yourself. It's cologne. It's the way oil is supposed to be. I suppose it just smell like olives. <laughs> I command a blessing on you in your house, in your house. Hey, I command a blessing on you in your house. Lord Jesus, I ask you to heal Leslie's husband of sciatic nerve damage. I ask you to heal him. In your mercy and your grace, Father, I petition you now to heal Vaughn. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kuk Nasta Kaili Melanon. Unblessed Taya. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Among Jacobi, Brustata, Main Laya, Mang Jacobi, Basta Reti, Shibikalun Mani. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to tell you, one of the best places to go as a missionary is like Nepal or India. Because I don't care where you go, you could just go on the corner and say, Hey, I'm a holy man, I have the power of God. Come, line up, I pray for you and bless you. Hundreds of people will come. So just come. You'll stand there all day praying for people. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. It's true. I love, I love being in Hindu nations. So the Lord's preparing you in every good work. He's getting you ready. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bruce Costa Tai. He's preparing you. Ah, to see Takuna Nana. I see Lako Messiah. I said he's preparing you. Hallelujah. Hila Mongolina. Hallelujah. You've never been so strong as you are now because you've never trusted in Jesus like you do now. Ha ha ha. And I tell you, that's the secret. There is no secret, but it is a secret. Ha 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 Ah, he's preparing you unto every good work in him. All you got to do is trust him. Ah, he's made strong in our weakness. Ah, in, our total, in, in other words, in our total dependency upon him. Ah, when we learn the simple lesson, without him we can do nothing. But by him, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. He gives me a strength, a supernatural ability, in other words. Ah, hallelujah. Ah. Hallelujah. Ooh, ra ba 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 ba. Ha. So I can walk on water and speak faith to the storm. Ha. Speak the word of life to those who are dead and they live again. Ha. Come on, man. Come on now. Listen, it, it's just got to come. It's the time has got to come where the dead are being consistently and continuously raised to life again in America. Ha. Not somewhere up in the mountains of, of some foreign nation. Ha. Some of the far dark corners of 
Africa or whatever, you know. But right here in America, in the, 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 not one in a lifetime, but many continually, ongoing. Be healed. What were you spraying on yourself? Just water? What were you spraying? Just water? just water because my mouth is so dry. Okay. Like my memory. Amen. Touch right now, Jesus. This old flicking, tormenting thing gets off of you now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Command your body to live. Command your body to live in Jesus' name. Command your body to live. 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 Miles, how are you doing? What's up? He's got a cold. He's got a cold. Something in his eyes. Yeah, I see that. That's a terrible thing, huh? Just was a robber of the joy and the feel good. And... Miles, just lift your hands towards heaven. Father, we thank you that. Miles and Bonnie brings baby to you to be healed. Are you concerned? No. <laughs> so you didn't just run over to the doctor? No. I just was wondering, just was wondering. Because it's very hard to get, have faith work in the midst of fear. Faith really works good in the midst of love. And really, love is just all about, you know, love is just all about knowing and believing how much Father loves you, you know, and is taking care of you and all of his promises are yea and amen. They're yea and amen. They're not, may, they're not maybe and, and if I get around to it. Thank you, Jesus, for touching little men in here. Hallelujah. Touch baby right now in Jesus' name. I command this whole sickness and disease go out of your body now. You foul spirit of virus, go out of this body now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Healed up. Father, I thank you for putting your blessing upon Miles. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that has worked against his life, and against his walk with you, I commanded to just go in Jesus' name. Don't torment and harass him ever again. Father, I ask you to use Miles. Pull out your anointing and your blessing upon him. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Upon Bonnie, too. Now, get busy. I know you're busy, but get busier. Amen. There's a lot more things you can do. Don't slow up. Amen. Don't, don't, don't ease up in any way. Don't be in doubt. <laughs> be bold and be confident in faith. Watch what God will do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Su rebe bebe sika. Si bruja la mandamba. Si bong lang lame bruja te prefetai. Man bong jail, man bong lay. Man long jing la mang dai. Right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for blessing Miles and Bonnie and baby. Amen. <laughs> I figure I should just go around and look see if somebody else I can bless.
Tonight, decide that you're going to get right with God if you're not right with God. Tonight, if there's anything in your life that you've been placing before the Lord Jesus Christ, kick it out. Say you're done. You're out of here. Restore Christ Jesus to the proper place in your heart, the proper place in your affections, the proper place in your priorities. Restore fellowship with Him to be in place. The most important thing for you is the anointing. You know, if you walk with God, I, I don't care who you are and where you're at right now. If you walk with God, he'll bring you into a place of fellowship with him, of his manifest presence, of his glory, that you could not even imagine. It would be a terrifying thought to think that you would ever be without this glory. And when you're there, you're there for keeps. It's true. Let's ask all of you to lift your hands towards heaven and let Jesus touch you now. I want every one of you here tonight to know that we love you dearly. That Father loves you more. That there's no good thing that we, He will withhold from you. You don't have to feel bad about yourself ever again. You don't have to feel like there's, it's hard for you to get back or it's hard for you to please God or do what's right because He's made it easy. He's made you right so you can do what's right. Mambakate. For I have loved you with an everlasting love. Sikatana kiki kitakana. Sitakana sikane kipa katukanaya. Sikataina. I just want you to grab the hand of the person that's by you when I, after I come by and touch you. The Lord's going to, Lord's going to, Lord's going to do something great. Lord's going to do something awesome. Lord's going to do something wonderful just because he loves you so much. True. Oh, how God loves us. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing right here. Thank you for the anointing right here in Caleb's life. How the power of God manifested through your life. Thank you, Father, for the mantle of the Holy Ghost upon David. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. For I have loved you with an everlasting love. For I have loved you with an everlasting love. baby. There is no end to the plans I have for you. There is no end to the plans I have for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For he has loved us with an everlasting love. For he has loved us with an everlasting love. 
Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Yeah, just keep on going. Just keep on singing. That's it. Praise God. That's good stuff. That's the sound of life and the sound of joy and the sound of peace.
There is no end. You may all prophesy one by one. You may all flow in the goodness of God's Holy Spirit, praising Him and giving thanks. And expect that everything that Father said He would do is going to happen in your life right now. Every good thing that He's promised is yours right now. And you're just going to grow in it, develop in it. You don't have to wait for end of the day. The wait is over. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, anybody who can move around, we just want to give you an opportunity <laughs> to worship the Lord with your giving in the expectation that out of that realm of giving, you're going to understand how to move in faith in relationship with Him for all the provision that He's purposed to put into your life and put into your hands. And then while you're doing that, find a bunch of people and hug them. Tell them that you love them and bless them in Jesus' name. Remember that we have a meeting on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. You want to be here? It's going to be another... Holy Ghost meeting, believing God for signs, wonders, and miracles. Friday night, we're going to have School of the Spirit. Tuesday night, School of Evangelism. Thursday night's Youth Ministry. There are a list of things that are going on right now. And uh, in ministry, if you want to be a part of them, we want you to be a part of them. The Lord touch you and give you the ability to do more than you've ever done before. Father, pray right now in the name of Jesus.